Hi, Luis. Hello, Ananda. How are you? Oh, I, I was not hearing anything, so I was wondering if things have started. Hi, Ananda. Not yet. Hi, Henriette. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Very good. It's raining heavily now. And is it, but is it, it's not cold at least. Here we have it's such not, cold weather and, and it, and it rains as well, which normally it doesn't in winter. It's not cold, but the power has gone just now. So I have uh, some backup power. Let's see how much it will <laughs> withstand for the Wi Fi. That's been one good thing for us here. We had lots of power failures, but since lockdown, we haven't. Oh. It has, it has reduced the demand. <laughs> yeah, it is a yeah. good. It's a good consequence. Uh, good. Um, and we haven't had either scheduled power outages or unscheduled. Oh, lovely. Our problem here is if we, it, this is the hurricane season. And we do get problems with electricity during the hurricane season. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. <laughs> Mine is already gone. I'm uh, with the power backup. Ananda, what do you use for power backup? Do you use a generator or a, or a UPS or how okay. do you do it? Uh, we have uh, not the UP, yeah, it's, uh, what is that called? Inverter. An inverter. Inverter. I, I don't know what we've got. <laughs> Hi, Chemek. Hi. Hi, Anir. Hello, everyone. Hi. And Chemek, very, very, thank you very much for, um, I'll announce it formally when we open, but thanks very much for staying with us. Um, it's a pleasure, Anir, really. It's a pleasure, really, believe me. We we are really you know uh, very fond of and we would we would really like to support uh, the the IGF community and uh, the, the secretariat and the mag of course in your efforts to make the IGF 2020 uh, well best virtual IGF ever. <laughs> Good. I, I hope I hope it is the best. It best will be. Ever the, it will hopefully be. Hopefully the first ever. We will manage. Okay, so I think we can get um, uh, two minutes. The two minutes. Ah, yes, two his. minutes. Shengetai. <laughs> Hello. Shengetai, two minutes. Hi, Shemek, how are you? Fine, thank you. We have storm at the moment in Warsaw. <laughs> oh, yes, it was raining like crazy here about an hour ago. It really oh. like torrential, tropical rain. Yeah. Oh. Yes, here too. So, yeah. But uh, Henriette said that uh, you have a cold winter, right? Yes, Chemek, we have. And, and, you know, I have very mixed feelings about it. On the one hand, it's, it's not very nice, but winters used to be very cold here. And then with global warming, uh, warming they've become less cold. So in a way, I feel it's quite good, you know, that, that at least we are back to to what should be the, the patterns here, because Johannesburg is high altitude. We are nearly 2000 meters above sea level. So it can get very cold by, by our standards. When I say very cold at night, it goes down to about minus two, minus three. And then um, in the day it can go up to 20, but at the moment it's probably about seven, which is cold, seven or eight. It's, it's cold for us. Okay. Well, definitely. If you, if you have an average temperature of 20 and you have seven, so yeah, definitely. And if but you much have too cold. experience of living in past British colonies, you will know that the buildings are often um, built in such a way that it's colder inside than outside. I see. Well, hopefully, anyway, it will, maybe it will be, you know, maybe it will get warmer, hopefully. No, it will. It will. And once the sun is um, shining, it gets very warm. It's just that when there is no sun, it gets very cold. So, Shengatai, are you ready? Yes, I think we should start. So, uh, good afternoon, evening, and morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the first day of the MAG meeting. 
um, for the IGF uh, 2020 for the June set of meetings. Uh, thank you all for being with us. And just a few things that we have to say before the meeting. Uh, the meeting is being recorded and also live streamed on YouTube. Um, there is a transcript and there's a link to those transcripts um, on the front page of the IGF website. So please uh, feel free to go there and get those links. Um, there is no interpretation today, um, but that's fine. I think we can all understand each uh, other. And I'd also like to say thank you very much to the government of Poland for providing it during the open consultation day. Um, if you would like to take the floor, could you please uh, use the speaking queue? If there's a technical problem and you cannot use the uh, speaking queue, just put your name in the um, chat and somebody from the secretariat will put your name in the speaking queue and you could easily see where you are in the speaking queue by looking at the screen or going to the website link. Um, once uh, the chair will call your name, if you are, when she calls you to the floor, uh, can you please say your name slowly and also that your affiliation. Um, once you've um, spoken, could you please make sure that your microphone is off and also please make sure that your microphone is off at all times if you're not speaking. Um, we, we had a couple of on mics yesterday, so, and it's very, very distracting to the speakers. Also, could you please, uh, when you speak, speak um, at a measured space, not too slow and not too fast, so that people whose English is not their first language or, or maybe their second or third language can understand you, and also the transcription can get you uh, properly. I think I have said everything. If not, Henriette will fill in the things that I have not said. Um, over to you, Henriette, please, uh, to the chair to open up the meeting. Um, thank you very much for that, Shengatai. Um, and um, congratulations to you and your team for having um, prepared well. And I think we had a good um, open consultation, but we'll get to that mm -hmm. later. Uh, and welcome to all the MAG members, um, welcome to observers, and welcome to our captioners, who I wonder where they are and what time it is, um, somewhere in the US. Um, and thanks again to ICANN for making that possible. And um, I'll do a quick review of the agenda and then we can get going. Um, so today we have until quarter past um, one UTC, um, so for the next 45 minutes, we're just going to review the agenda and um, we'll do a debrief on the open consultations. Um, we really just want to, to get a, a sense of how it went and what we should factor into our planning um, for, for IGF 2020. Um, by the way, if you note, we've got the annotated agenda on screen. And just a reminder here that we'd like um, all the MAG members to to rename themselves on Zoom, um, just so that we know which group we can um, put you in, because we've assigned you or you've assigned yourselves to uh, workshop evaluation groups, and we just it's easier for Luis to to cluster you into breakout groups if your name indicates which group you're part of. Our next session will be um, a breakout session. Um, um, but it's a it's an informal social um, breakout session. It's only 15 minutes. We'll randomly um, put all the meeting participants, MAG members and others, into breakout groups. And you can really talk about anything. Um, you can talk about a virtual IHF if you want, but it's just a good time to connect with one another. And I think my only request is that that when you um, say, uh, when you greet one another, just tell one another where you are dialing into from the meeting, just to give us a bit of a sense of the spread of the MAG and, and where all the MAG members are. Some are at home, some are not at home. Um, so that's really the only requirement. And like um, on the first day of the open consultation, this will be automated. You'll be automatically randomly clustered uh, we'll have fewer groups this time. And when your time is up, you'll be automatically sent back to plenary. Then we have um, a MAG plenary session where we have the workshop evaluation groups report their work. Um, we've added a little bit more detail to the annotated agenda in response to 
I think what, what seemed to me popular demand for more parameters. But we'll discuss that later when we get to that. So we'll have a plenary discussion. After that plenary discussion, um, the workshop evaluation um, groups, they'll, they'll do their reports, but then we'll break out. And based on the discussion of those reports in plenary, the same groups will revisit their initial recommendations and um, affirm those. So I won't go into more detail. We can go through the detail um, at the beginning of each session. And that essentially is, um, is really the, the agenda for today. Um, we've put a, an optional task for, for that, uh, that breakout session. Should you have the time and should you feel um, that way inclined, um, please do talk about some of your preferences for a virtual IGF. But I don't want you to be distracted uh, by planning and designing a virtual IGF. You know, the primary task of this MAG meeting is for us to finalize um, our, our workshop selection and, um, and also to, to look at the, the overall program, the design and the main sessions. We might have to adjust that based on the virtual IGF, but I don't think we should um, not uh, meet our primary objectives of the meeting. But if there's time, if you want to discuss virtual IGF parameters in your breakout group. And that is really it. And we are asking those that are still awake and able to be with us to come back for a very short closing um, plenary. The groups are not required to report back. Um, we've given the facilitators and the moderators um, time to do that. We'll report back um, tomorrow. So that's really just getting together quickly, making sure we're all on track and clarifying what the next steps are for tomorrow. So that is it. Any questions or comments on the agenda? I don't see any. So on that note, I declare the meeting open. So let's look um, back at yesterday. So I want to start by thanking the MAG members. I felt that you had a very good, I was very comfortable with the balance of um, MAG members being in listening mode, but then participating, particularly when there were gaps in the discussion, um, because that's very important. So I think, um, you know, there is, uh, um, we, we, need, we need to sit back and listen, but also we, we need to participate. And I, th I was very happy with the, with the balance. Um, Shangatai and the Secretariat have prepared a, a, a short summary for us of highlights of input that was um, received. Um, but before we look at those, are there any general reactions um, on um, the, the open consultation that anybody wants to share. And I, I did someone ask for the floor? I saw there was a name that went, that appeared and disappeared. Did I miss someone? No, Louise, I assume no. So yes, anybody who want to share some general reflections on the, the open consultation days? Jutta, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Henriette, for giving me the floor. Uh, I just wanted to say very briefly that I do think we, uh, we had an excellent open consultation session over the last two days, and it, it makes me very much looking forward to, to also having a virtual IGF. I, I was a bit reluctant to, uh, when, when the announcement came that we would have an virtual only IGF uh, in November. But after these two, stay, these two days with so many people engaged in the debate and also with high level participation, I really did appreciate also the session yesterday in the afternoon with Under Secretary General uh, Fabrizio Hochschild. So I, this makes me very confident that we can cope with the situation and that we will have a very good IGF uh, also. It's uh, virtual. 
Uh, and thank you for, for making this possible because I do think it's really a joint effort. It needs uh, all uh, that we can put into that exercise and I'm, I'm really happy to continue with that. Thank you. Thanks very much, Yukta. Yes, I also felt encouraged by that. And I, I have to apologize, it was an error in my judgment when we planned the agenda. I should have allocated much more time to the Q&A um, with Fabrizio. Um, I didn't anticipate that there would be um, so much interest in that. Um, um, Sally Yu, please introduce yourself for the record. Um, Salio, I assume you are an observer and that your mic is muted. Am I right? Hello, Andrea. Sorry, this is Luis. We cannot unmute him. Probably there is a momentary issue in his side. Let's okay. try to... Or her side, sorry. Salio, um, we can't hear you right now, um, but please, you can type your comment in the chat. I don't see anyone else asking um, for the floor at this point. There are a few comments in the chat. I do really want to encourage MAG members to speak uh, um, today rather than use the chat. We're not a huge group um, and um, it is, it's a good opportunity for us to hear one another's voices. Um, Saliu, I hope you can type, but Shengatai, if you are ready, um, let's look at your um, summary of, of the takeaways from the open consultation, um, particularly those that are relevant to the planning of IGF 2020, um, and then hopefully MAG members will have more to, to share. So Shengatai, can you take the floor, please? Sure. Uh, thank you very much, Henry. I would just like to mention as well that uh, the summary was also produced with the help of uh, Samantha Dickinson, who is working at the Secretariat as a as the communications consultant. Um, I think she is the only one whose name has not been mentioned um, over the past couple of days. So just to mention her. Um, so for the summary, uh, this is what uh, we derived as relevant um, for the MAG discussions. Uh, so the four thematic areas, that is trust, data, environment, and inclusion, are still relevant um, for the IGF 2020. I think that was underlined and uh, nobody disagreed with that. And um, there was a suggestion to have a main session on the digital corporation roadmap linked to the 2025 renewal of the IGF and the WISIS uh, plus 20. Um, meetings that will be going on then. And uh, there was a suggestion as well that um, we should keep the music night. We can have a virtual music night. Um, we have over 40 people registered for it. So we can do something in the line that has been happening on YouTube, etc. over the uh, pandemic when everybody was at home. Um, also, um, there was a strong sentiment to maintain the youth track. And um, there was a request for the IGF to make sure that gender-based violence is discussed somewhere in the program. And I think that was answered that it, it will be um, particularly addressed uh, with the BPF on gender. And also um, um, there's a sprinkling of that also uh, during the workshops as well. And many hold, a, hold that a high level session for ministers um, later than originally scheduled in the IGF week um, so that there'll be more clarity about uh, the IGF plus model. So we should hold the, the high level sessions later on um, than um, previously because previously they started um, the IGF. We used to have the high level sessions on the Sunday and Monday. So there's a suggestion that we have them at the end of the meetings. Um, then there was a becoming an online event means that some agility can be built into the program. 
um, a session on emerging issues can be added where people can share information about what is emerging in the country or region. Um, ISAC also proposed um, to cooperate with the MAG on hosting a track of sessions dedicated to local case studies on emerging issues. And this mod modality should be agreed on um, between ISOC and uh, the MAG, and also, of course, um, other stakeholders in general, if they have um, views on that. Um, as was mentioned, uh, the Under Secretary General of uh, UNDESA, Mr. Liu, um, also joined us and gave us a um, address. And the part of the contents of his address was that the IGF is currently halfway through its 10 year mandate. Uh, given to it by the UN General Assembly in 2015, and it will be up to the United Nations General Assembly uh, to renew and update its mandate again in 2025. The Under Secretary General also mentioned that on Monday, he submitted a note to the UN Secretary General outlining how UN DESA is going to follow up on his roadmap in enhancing the IGF in collaboration with all stakeholders, including with the MAG members. And Mr. Liu also noted there's much more to be done, including better integrating intersessional work, enhancing the visibility of the IGF, addressing its long-term sustainability and resources necessary for increased participation of stakeholders, especially those from developing countries. The USG invited MAG members and interested stakeholders to work with us and come up with concrete solutions for a stronger IGF. And as you know, yesterday we had um, the, the Q&A on the Digital Corporation Roadmap and the IGF um, Plus. And this was started by the Under Secretary General, Mr. Fabrizio Hostchild, a Special Advisor to the Secretary General. And he explained the UN Secretary General's roadmap for digital cooperation, recognized that technology is too fast moving and there is little appetite among UN member states for new conventions or new UN bodies. So the report um, tries to work with what already exists and strengthen these um, existing uh, bodies and organizations by making them more inclusive and outcome oriented. And this also included the IGF plus. Uh, for the recommendation 5A and 5B, the consultations have shown wide support for the multi-stakeholder cooperative model and also wide support for the IGF plus model. Um, in the consultations, many people have called for a clearer agenda setting at the IGF, a leaner agenda and a better interaction between um, the discussions going on in the IGF and the discussions being taken elsewhere, a linking mechanism of sorts. Um, there's also been suggestions to have a mechanism to coordinate follow-up actions on the IGF um, discussions and link them to the appropriate normative and decision-making forums. Uh, there were suggestions to have a more focused IGF agenda based on a limited number of strategic policy issues. Stronger links among the Global Forum and its regional, national, and sub-regional and youth initiatives um, was also encouraged. Integrating program and intersessional policy development work to support the priority areas was also one point that, that was noted. Uh, the roadmap says the Secretary General will create a strategic and empowered high-level body building on the experience of the MAG. This body will not replace the MAG, but aims to better connect global leaders, global opinion makers on the digital policy issues that are increasingly important in today's world. The NRI survey also showed a lot of support for having the future IGF Plus be able to make recommendations, as well as for closer integration between the national and regional initiatives and the IGF. Also that some of the functions suggested for an IGF plus could perhaps be better performed at a more localized or regional level. Timelines for implementation of the roadmap 
have yet to be mapped out. And during the open consultations, it was noted that it's important to consider how to evolve the best practice forums in the context of IGF Plus. And that's the end of the summary. Uh, thank you, Anuret, back to you. Thanks very much, Shinetai. And thanks a lot to Sam and for uh, pointing out that we haven't thanked her yet. Um, Sam, thanks so much for your summaries and for your work on the newsletter. And it's very good to have you with us as one of the team. Um, any reflections or any comments on, on um, these highlights? Um, we've got a few more minutes. Um, so I think it's, this is a good opportunity for us to, to have general discussion, particularly on the, the roadmap for digital cooperation. Um, and also um, input received on the, the virtual IGF. I think the inputs received on thematic content, we can, we can revisit later when we get to um, the main sessions uh, in particular. And just for the record, everyone, so that you um, understand our protocol for MAG meetings is that we give MAG members the floor first, if they've requested it and observers after, but if there are no MAG members in the queue, we will provide it that time allows, we give the floor to observers as well. So, um, Sally, have you managed to sort out your microphone? Hi, Andre, this is Luis. Hey, it doesn't seem so, sorry. And Sylvia, um, you say that you can't load the speaking queue. Do you want to, are you requesting the floor? Okay, Sylvia, you have the floor. Thanks, Andrea. Sorry, the got con lost control of my keyboard. <laughs> My apologies. Um, yes, uh, thank you very much, Andrea, for giving me the floor. I um, wanted to echo the comments of um, about the, the, how great the exchange with the Under Secretary General was, uh, that he answered uh, almost all the questions, uh, the more the difficult ones, straight on. So that that was really interesting. Um, I just wanted to pick up on some comments that Maria Bass made on the chat yesterday about. Um, trying to figure out how some of those mechanisms would work um, and the opportunity for the MAC to um, provide uh, input as a, as a group um, to, those, to, to those options uh, that may come up uh, on the paper. I, I uh, think it's great that Hannah and Rudolf are working on that a piece, but it, it is a little bit weird, honestly, um, to to have some MAC members uh, involved and actively participating, and others uh, not knowing uh, really what's what's going on. And um, because in the end, those decisions will affect um, not us, that like me, are on our last year on the MAC, but it will affect the future of of the IGF and a lot of the things that we have built. So it will be very interesting to see um, what mechanisms that are, are possible to, to get a little bit more understanding of what, what is uh, you know, the thinking behind uh, and to see how can we get behind it and support it and, and provide our expertise uh, to, the, to the process. Um, there is a you know, simple, simple things like that, that they seem to be kind of overlooked a little bit on, on the uh, panel's report and on the roadmap uh, that may have been discussed as part of their own uh, process um, about simple definitions, right? So for example, what they really mean by digital cooperation to what organizations or platforms or alliances or, uh, structures are they uh, referring to when they criticize uh, those those uh, platforms? Um, I think that that's important to to know because is you can assume things that are actually not there. Um, uh, so so I I appreciate uh, very much the 
the resources that uh, Jorge shared earlier uh, today that uh, Diplo put together a video where you can read the report with an expert uh, and see the annotated copy of the report. Uh, that's a good insight um, for those of us that have only contributed to one of the recommendations. So yeah, I, I think it's, there is a lot, of, a lot of work to be done and uh, there is a lot of expertise on this MAC and the past members of the MAC uh, and it would be really good to find ways um, so that, for example, all the work that the group, the working group on IGF improvement did on that massive spreadsheet that had documented everything that, that was suggested in the past and, and keeping track of all of that work that unfortunately we haven't been able to maintain as far as I know. So it, it is, uh, there is a lot of work there and I, I just don't want to um, pretend that all the new things are going to be shiny and better. And, and as Maria Paz mentioned yesterday, that the, the ways that we have now are for some reason obscure and bad and, and whatever. So you just need a little bit more of uh, context, I guess, um, and uh, to, to digest that information and try to figure out the way forward. Thank you. Thanks, Sylvia. Um, and Maria Paz. I'm here. Okay. Please activate your camera if you can. Yeah, um, I did that. Can you see me? Can you hear me and see me? Yes. Good. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for <laughs> Sylvia that quoted some of my comments yesterday. I just want to uh, add a little bit on top of that to what uh, she just uh, have mentioned. Um, it's not only also about how the Mac can input with experience, which is very relevant. And, and, I, and I want to make very clear, especially because uh, Rudolf and Hannah are part of this group, that I really commend and, and appreciate the effort that the group has uh, been in doing for reaching uh, people after the consultation. And I know that we as MAC members had opportunity also to input in that process if we had uh, enough time for, for, for uh, participating in these different uh, opportunities of, of commenting that th they have been working very hardly and very well for constructing. But beside that, there is really good effort in trying to reach uh, more diversity of opinion and participation. I think that is really relevant the way in which decisions will be made about the different options that uh, uh, arise from this consultation process and all the input that being gathered. So I understand from the from the comments that they, they, they made yesterday, uh, either uh, speaking or in the chat, that they, they are not in the role of deciding uh, what uh, model or what option will be taken. And I understand that and I value that, but uh, in some point, some decision will be made. So to the point uh, uh, that Sylvia was uh, mentioning, referring to the discussion yesterday, I think that this concept of that everything that is existing is being processed and made in an obscure way that is not clear for people outside the groups. Uh, I don't, I don't see how that could be better if in this case the, the decision making process, uh, it's not totally clear uh, who will take part of that, uh, what will be the following cr criteria, because of course it's very relevant to gather different opinions, but later, uh, uh, as Christian was mentioning uh, yesterday in the chat, and I totally agree with her, uh, there is a need of consensus to move forward whatever final decision is made in, in, the, in the subject. So, I, I really want to highlight that because if all the purpose of proposing new structures and new modalities of engagement was providing more opportunity of transparency uh, and, and diversity and all that, um, I, I think that this is a critical point that should be uh, given attention in order to ensure that and not just reread the process uh, that Mac uh, and other a current instructor had been working very hard for many years to, to, to bring that spirit of, of, of openness and participation and diversity. I will leave it there for now. I have comments about the virtual IGF, but I, I'm not sure if this is the moment. Thank you. Um, thanks very much, um, Maria Paz. I don't see anyone else taking the floor, but, but perhaps um, Rudolf or Hannah, you want to comment. 
Um, and I don't think that we should put them under particular pleasure, uh, pressure because they are in the mag. But I think something for the mag to consider is whether um, there shouldn't be an IGF mag 2020 response um, to the roadmap. Um, I think that's something for you to consider. The, uh, I don't see any reason why um, it, it might not be helpful for the MAG to, to draft such a response. And then I think just the second thing I would caution about is, you know, digital cooperation and, and the architecture of what will become the architecture of digital cooperation is not just the IGF. And, and I think we, um, it's, it's the IGF plus, but IGF plus starts with the IGF. So um, I think that we need to, to respond, absolutely. And, and there are really important opportunities for us to, to, um, to, to respond to. But I don't think we should feel that as the IGF, we need to undertake the entire burden of, of what is required to have an effective uh, digital cooperation architecture. But at the same time, I completely support your points, Maria Paz and Sylvia, about um, we do need to, to try and make an intervention to prevent, um, how can I say it, in, in uh, allocation of energy and resources that is not cost effective, that is not actually going to, to add value to uh, incrementally to, to work that has been done in the past and to what exists. So, so but I, I would ask you, this is a question from me to you as the MAG, um, would you like to develop a, a, a response? I hear no voices, I see no hands. Rudolf and Hannah, are you willing to, to, um, to share some reflections at this point? Uh, there's some comments in the uh, chat. Okay, um, can, can you read them for us? Um, although I would really appreciate it if MAG members could take the floor. Can you hear me, yes. Rudolf? Yes, we can hear you, Rudolf. Go can ahead, please. Me? Yeah. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, I, I, think, um, I think we have to, as I, as I said yesterday, we have to be aware of the fact that we are at the beginning, in the middle or, in the uh, or at the beginning of a long-term process. And there are some, I would say, major questions that uh, will be addressed during this process. Uh, and one of the, in my view, most major questions will be multi-stakeholderism uh, versus multilateralism or combination of both in the, in the common uh, architecture of the future. And I think uh, there are tendencies within uh, the membership of the United Nations um, to, to uh, go more towards multilateralism than in the past. We, and there are arguments for that. Um, at the same time, I think we must not lose the advantages and the, and the good functioning system of multi-stakeholderism. And this is why I think the MAG uh, could play a role or could, could uh, make a difference when um, responding. I mean, I, I wouldn't call it formally a response, but in, um, I think the MAG should continuously uh, stay engaged in this uh, endeavor of uh, shaping the, the, the internet governance structures of the future. So, um, and at the same time, Henriette, I completely agree with you. We should not ourselves be un un inefficient and do double work in you know, taking the whole roadmap, every aspect of it, and uh, adding to it. I think that will be also too, ho too huge of a task for us. So this is why I think we should concentrate on perhaps the structural questions, and then, uh, and perhaps one other question, like, I don't know, whatever inclusion or connectivity or, I don't know, so, so one, 
more structural and one more um, question on the substance and, um, and have some ideas. I wouldn't call it a formal response, but to, to feed in the ideas of the MEC into the process, not only because they are, they are very good ideas and very valuable contributions, but also to make the voice of the multi-stakeholder system uh, continuously be heard in this process. I think that's of some um, critical importance uh, that goes beyond the content of what uh, is going to be said. Thank you. Thanks very much for that, Rudolf. Um, ben, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, good morning. I'm, I'll keep it short because I'm just warming up. Um, I think what I'm going to say tallies with, with uh, what Rudolf ended with just there, but um, I, I, I'm not sure. Um, I think the important thing would be for the, for the MAG to find space during the annual meeting for the, um, for the community to discuss, to discuss the roadmap and, and particularly how it relates to the IGF and it uh, being enhanced and transitioned to an IGF plus. So um, I think that should be the main contribution of the MAG. I'm not particularly, um, I don't think it's particularly important for the MAG itself to try and come to a view, um, rather for us to facilitate discussion within the IGF community as a kind of contribution to that, um, bringing in the multi-stakeholder views on uh, how to move to an IGF plus. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. Before I give the floor to Ananda, um, I think um, I do see in the chat there are some responses for, a, for a, some support for a MAG response. So I don't think that, that we should look at these as mutually exclusive. Absolutely agree with you. We have to facilitate um, discussion of this as part of the IGF 2020 program. But I think that, um, yes, maybe a response on, on structural factors, as Rudolf suggested, is, is also a good idea. I don't think we should see them as two mutually exclusive um, options. And I'm sure you didn't intend that. Um, um, but, uh, but you can come back to that later. Ananda, and then we have Susan, and then we have Paul. And I'm afraid I'm going to close the queue after Paul. Thank you. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Uh, this is Ananda Rajkhanal, a government stakeholder from Nepal. When we are talking about IGF Plus, uh, it's very unfortunate, uh, very sad to share with you that uh, in the context of Nepal, IGF has uh, not yet been the, uh, in the agenda of the government. Now, so far, IGF is in the agenda of the civil society alone. Whatever they do is uh, the activities uh, pertaining to IGF. Uh, the government almost is unaware of the existence of IGF and the topics that we discuss here uh, and uh, probably so the discussion on IGF plus I think uh, countries like Nepal I don't know about other uh, the countries in the global south but uh, most of the countries mm. to my view is uh, you know not aware of the existence of IGF itself so how can we make these countries on board so that IGF activities become the agenda of the government and uh, the huge repository of uh, knowledge that we have cre created during the whole IGF uh, processes uh, can be better utilized in making internet related policies. It's a very serious thought uh, that um, United Nations uh, should uh, consider. Thank you very much. Thanks for that, Ananda, and I think that's a very valid point. Um, just, I see our speaker's queue is continuing, but I'm going to have to close the queue after, um, okay, well, if you're all very brief, then, then, then we'll let everyone speak, including Alain, who's an observer. Um, but please be brief, we're gonna run over time. Go ahead. Um, Susan, you are next. Hi, my apologies, Henriette, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, this is Susan Chalmers, MAG member, um, 
from the National Telecommunications and Information Administration at the U.S. Department of Commerce. Um, I will be brief. Um, I just I do have some concerns about the um, the prospect of the MAG as a whole uh, drafting a response and um, coming to a consensus-based decision uh, in response to the, the IGF plus proposal. Um, and I, I think maybe we can enunciate, uh, or I'd be happy to enunciate those concerns uh, when we have more time. Um, but I, I think that, um, I, I do like Ben's idea of having um, a, a session to discuss this with, within the IGF program this year. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Remember, a response can be uh, made up of questions. Um, a, a response does not have to necessarily uh, be a consensus view. It could just be um, commonly uh, relevant, uh, commonly agreed relevant questions. Um, Paul, you have the floor. Yes. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, can you hear me? And can yes, everybody hear me? Can okay, hear good. You and see you. Okay, great. I, I just wanted to uh, support the views that uh, were just expressed by Susan and, um, uh, and Ben as well. Um, and I think Rudolph, uh, to some extent, um, I think with the, the roadmap, obviously, we're all very interested in it. Uh, and there's, uh, there's a lot at stake from the MEG uh, and the IGF point of view. But uh, some of us, and I think myself uh, coming from the government of Canada, uh, and maybe not just government representatives, are, are still coming to grips with the roadmap and, and formulating our own views on it. Um, so I think it might be difficult then to engage in, in some kind of, um, uh, of, a, of a negotiation uh, and to try to reach an agreed upon MAG view. Uh, so therefore, I would um, uh, be more supportive of, uh, I think what Ben was suggesting, certainly we should be a platform for discussing uh, the roadmap and we should feed into it. And I think, Henriette, perhaps the, yours is a, a, a good suggestion as well, that we could formulate questions. Perhaps that's a, that's a good compromise. But I just wanted to, to sort of uh, join others in sounding uh, a note of caution about having a kind of negotiated uh, MAG opinion. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Absolutely. That's very important. Um, Danko, you have the floor. Danko, we cannot hear you. Are you unmuted? Can you hear, can you hear me now? Yes. Now I'm we can hear you. Okay, sorry about that. So, um, uh, two brief points. Uh, one, um, uh, Serbia, the country that I'm coming from is in Europe, uh, but it's not a global south in geographical sense, but we are a developing country and we also have a challenge that I, as a member of technical community, I'm in the MAG, but our government talks about digital transformation all the time, but doesn't actually recognize the existence of the internet or the processes that we are discussing here. So it's a global challenge. And the second point uh, about a uh, reading through the roadmap, uh, point 67, I see a recognition of the high complexity of the digital corporation architecture today and uh, trying to find a simplified way. And in a way, um, I believe uh, this is something that we should be very careful about because when I read the uh, uh, organization that participated in creating the roadmap, I don't see much of the technical community represented. And um, I would say that internet is complex, but it works in part because it's complex and because it's so decentralized and delegated. And that we really need to be careful to observe the multi-stakeholder model and to include also the technical community, not to try to make simplified models that will actually break the internet. Thank you. Um, thanks, thanks, Danko. Um, Tamea, you have the floor. Thank you, I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me now? 
we can hear you and yes. just a reminder my apologies i should have reminded everyone earlier just introduce yourself for the record when you take the floor over to you thank you thank you henriette um my name is timia Schütte. i work for the international chamber of commerce um, and i'm a third year mag member for the business community just wanted to add my voice really quickly because i see we're running out of time um wanted to add my voice to what was expressed earlier by um um, by Paul and Susan um, and Ben and also by, by Rudolf. Um, I wanted to um, really say that I, I'm sure that all of us is, are very, very interested in the, in the report um, uh, or in, in the roadmap. Um, and we are looking forward to seeing how different stakeholders um, are mobilizing around it. Um, but I also wanted to um, highlight that there is a process in, um, in place still that, that a lot of work is going into um, that our colleagues um, Hannah and Rudolf are leading. Um, and if we are thinking of any sort of response, uh, we probably want to um, wait for that and to see how that complements uh, what the Secretary General has outlined for the IGF Plus and anything else. But I also wanted to um, to caution us uh, away, um, if possible, from a negotiated MAG response um, per se, um, and rather um, to put us in a, into a more active mode, uh, if possible. Um, and as Ben said, um, to have a session and also to think about how we can bring it into um, once the community has had a chance to discuss it, once the uh, once the options paper is also out. Uh, and for us to think about how can we bring those recommendations into um, the processes of the IGF going forward. Um, but I'm not sure um, providing a written response is the way. Um, I think we, we should rather take it into, into reflection for us, um, discuss with the community and see how we can, um, we can build on that for ourselves. Thank you. And um, thank you, Tamea. Um, Ale, do you have a brief response? I don't hear our observer taking the floor. So, so let's close on this. I think um, what I take away from this discussion is that the, we definitely um, do not, oh, Ale, are you able to speak? We, we cannot hear you. Ale, we cannot hear you. I suggest that you type your comment in the chat. And then, and then we can um, read it or, or see it. So to close this discussion, um, there's obviously a lot more discussion to come. Um, there's definitely a consensus that we need to facilitate further discussion of the roadmap um, as we build IGF 2020's program. Um, there's also, I think, agreement that we do not want to submit a negotiated position or consensus position of any kind um, um, as the MAG or from the MAG. But I think there's still an opening here for possibly um, the MAG uh, responding with some questions. And um, I will leave that to you to take further. What I suggest is that those of you who feel that it is uh, worthwhile for the MAG to, to respond in, in some form, that you make a proposal um, of what that uh, what shape that would take and what that would cover, taking into account the fact that 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 we cannot present a negotiated position as the MAG, and we have many institutional and, and governmental representatives as well. So I'll leave that to you as MAG members to to take further um, with the sensitivity of the context of the MAG um, to be taken into account. So um, I'm sorry I have to cut this short. Um, we're running a little bit late. So at this point, um, no one should go offline because we're now going to join our informal, um, just catching up with one another and you can discuss this or anything else um, um, freely um, as we break out into our, what did we call them? Our check-in breakout groups. So see someone, some of you in a breakout groups. Louise, you can sure. sort us into our groups. Sure, thank you, Andre. Just to confirm, 15 minutes? Yes, I think we can stick to 15 minutes. Okay, we can let's, let's running start. running a little bit late.
And I encourage people to switch on their mics and their cameras when they are in the breakout groups.
this automatic uh, breakout rooms involve engaging someone in breakout rooms and then automatic change over to main session is very interesting feature of this uh, zoom i never used luis <coughs> yes i am here i, I agree with you Luisa. yeah so where is that feature by the way uh you have to be the host and i think it's only for license set okay yeah i'm sure it's only for license set um welcome back um everyone welcome back from your your break and um, i hope people had a good discussion and um, i was lucky to be with some very nice people and we had a very nice discussion so we are now back to mag plenary and um this is really where we begin the substance of the work of the mag and i know you mag members have been building up to this and and have done a lot of preparatory work even more than you would normally have done um, for the second mag meeting um so we will now that i'll just just uh, give an overview of the purpose of this session um the purpose of this session is for us to um, get the recommendations from the workshop evaluation groups. And so those MAG members that have looked at workshop proposals uh, clustered into, to, into the four themes, the four thematic tracks, and they've been evaluating them, uh, making recommendations, decisions for mergers, um, what to keep, what not to keep, the, the red basket, the yellow basket, and the green basket. And, but also other recommendations that might have emerged, plus beginning to break these themes into sub-themes. And the purpose of those sub-themes being that they can help us um, understand what is the scope of, of a thematic track and, and what should we try and, and, and aim for in terms of topical coverage in a thematic track. So um, I won't go any, uh, on any longer at this point. I'd like to hand over to the facilitators and thanks very much for all your hard work of these um, workshop evaluation groups. Um, I also want to thank the workshop process working group for all the work that they've done to try and, and synthesize a, a way for us to have a common working, common working methods in the different groups. So I'd like to take the groups in reverse alphabetical order so I want to start with trust. Can we um, start with the, the feedback from the trust workshop evaluation group? Thanks, Henriette, for keeping us on our toes there. Um, there was me expecting we'd start with a, start with a D. Um, and just remember to introduce yourself again for the record. Sorry, yes, good point. I am Ben Wallace um, with Microsoft for the record. Um, so I'm going to, on behalf of both me and Sylvia, who led the trust evaluation group, um, I'm going to run through our recommendations. Um, and we've got on the screen um, the, the Word document that I submitted, or it was a PDF with our recommendations. Um, but I did also provide a, a single slide um, that put everything in, in one page. Um, so if the Secretariat's able to put that up as well, or instead, that would be great. Um, so the slide that's going to be put up um, shows the workshops that we propose within the structure um, that we propose for the trust track. Um, the yellow, or when we get there, um, highlights they denote the workshops that we propose be lifted from the yellow basket and all the rest are from the um, green basket. Um, so I'm going to run through our recommendations via an explanation of the three stage process we undertook. In uh, the first stage, we allocated um, our 98 proposals to three baskets based on their score and their ranking and that put about 30% of the proposals all of which scored above four into um, the green basket. And then the bulk of this first stage was about analyzing the green basket to look at two things. Um, first, to look at the structure of the track. Now in February, the, the trust 
working group um, developed a subthematic structure to help us think about the narrative and to organize the illustrative policy questions. So looking at the green basket um, proposals, we found that that structure pretty much stood up, um, but we did make a few small revisions. Um, that included deleting a, an identity sub-theme, which there, there were no proposals in the green basket, and also simplifying the titles of the remaining five sub-themes. And then the second part of that first stage was to do a gap analysis. So we looked at the diversity data for the speakers of the Green Basket workshop proposals. And we identified that speakers from the Africa and Grulac regions were particularly underrepresented compared to other regions. And that all stakeholder groups except the civil society were underrepresented. So the aim of stage two was for evaluation group members to suggest workshops in the yellow basket that could help to mitigate these gaps, these underrepresentations. And they could suggest either lifting a workshop up um, from yellow to, to, the, to the green basket or identifying workshops which could be merged. And um, as per the guidance from the working group on workshop process, we did not consider for mergers any of the um, top 10% of proposals in our track. And the aim of stage three was then to discuss the suggestions from stage two and make final decisions. Um, and this resulted in the recommendations that I submitted on Friday, and they can be summarized as 30 workshops in the green basket. These are ranked by the score they received, um, except for one adjustment that we made. Uh, we discovered that there was one workshop proposal that had been submitted twice. Uh, it was pretty much a duplicate. Now, as it turned out, um, you might remember the, the trust group was so big that we, uh, we were divided into two. So um, half of the trust track um, looked at the first 49 proposals and the other half looked at the other 49. As it happened, these duplicates were in um, both halves of our evaluation group. So we just combined the score. That changed the rank from 22nd in the track to 29th. So we, we adjusted the ranking there. We proposed listing six workshops to the top of the yellow basket for inclusion in the program if space provides. We also explained the gaps that these proposals helped to address and we provided some recommendations for how the proposers could improve their workshop. And finally, we proposed one merger and we made suggestions for how the merger could be achieved. Um, but of course, given that one of the workshops we're proposing be merged was in the green basket, um, we note that this is only a recommended merger and that workshop number 341 is not required to merge, but is invited to merge with this workshop number 74 that otherwise wouldn't be taken forward. Thank you. Thanks very much for that, Ben. Um, any questions for, for Ben or any additions from other members of this group? Susan, is that you wanting to add? Hello? Now we can hear you. Okay. Um, no, I'm sorry. I didn't... <laughs> I didn't mean to raise my hand. I, I apologize. If no, I did. you don't need to apologize. Um, okay. Just one question from me. So Ben, these, these, um, what we see on the screen in front of us, those are the sub themes you are proposing. Cybersecurity, infrastructure, misinformation, media and democracy, dig digital sovereignty and internet fragmentation and digital safety. Could you perhaps just say a little bit more about those sub themes, how you see them, and how you um, came to agree to, to agree on them. Yes, so actually these were pretty much sub themes that um, were developed back in February when um, the, the trust working group was developing the narrative. And um, so obviously we had the narrative text, which is fairly high level, um, but does uh, in its two paragraphs, make an effort at, at highlighting all of the different 
elements of, of what we think can go into the trust track. Um, and so this was and the the proposals which ended up in our green basket pretty much reflected um, what we thought would be a, a logical uh, and comprehensive structure back in February. Um, but as I said, we we just we removed one of the one of the sub themes which didn't seem to attract um, any good proposals from the community. Um, but otherwise, it, there's a fairly good balance in terms of numbers between them. I think it shows that misinformation is clearly um, a big topic this year, uh, I think. And just going back to the start of my time with the MAG two, three years ago, um, cybersecurity might have been the biggest basket. Um, and I, it, it's interesting to note, uh, and it reflects our times, I think, that misinformation is such a big concern for the community. And there are a lot of ideas about how to tackle it and the um, the balance that needs to be struck um, between freedom of expression and um, and protecting society from misinformation and disinformation. I don't know if that helps as an explanation. Thanks a lot, Ben. And if I remember correctly, your green basket is 36, am I right? Is that how many uh, proposals you have in your green basket? Um, we, it depends how you, uh, Want to describe the baskets but we put 30 in the green basket and another six that we've lifted right to the top of the yellow basket so we are proposing that those 36 be approved you could say we've moved them into the green basket or you could say they're the ones from the yellow basket we'd like added uh, i'm not sure exactly how you describe it but 36 is the number yes okay i'm just taking note of that paul you have the floor uh, thank you, uh, Paul, Paul Randia. I, I just wanted to get some clarity, and I, I guess this will pull through when, when we do our presentation for inclusion. Uh, I know that we hadn't determined the number of workshops that would be selected per theme, uh, but I wasn't under the impression that it would be so high a number uh, per track. So it, is, is this 36 based on a suggestion that all of these are accepted or is this like a short list and out of that whatever number would be uh, selected? Uh, yeah, just wondering because it does have a bit of a material impact on, on our selection. Ben, can you respond? Can I, please? can I respond to that? Yes, go ahead, Sylvia. Just um, everyone thank you. Use yourself when you take the mic. Yes, um, this is Silvia Caena, uh, MAG member, technical community. I did this um, work with Ben uh, as co-facilitators and with the support of, of the two Trust One and two Trust Two uh, working group um, to come up with these um, decisions or recommendations. So to answer your question, Paul, yes, this is our recommendation. Uh, the Trust uh, Track received 98 proposals. So the initial discussion on the working group uh, for workshop evaluation was to allocate the number of proposals based on percentages. And we refer to those uh, maximum numbers and these uh, recommendations are within that scope. So basically it was around um, the, the top 20, 30% of each one of the tracks if you um, uh, look at the, at the initial calculations that uh, Roberto uh, included on the workshop evaluation uh, guidelines uh, on the annex. So we work based on that and the proposals that you see on the screen, um, the ones that are not marked in yellow, they all are um, the higher score from four up. So they are all in between the good and the excellent um, proposals. And uh, we know that there is no decision um, in terms of numbers, uh, but we agreed uh, in principle on with the, the working group on evaluation uh, that uh, was going to be representative of the number of proposals received uh, per track. Um, thanks, and, and Sylvia. And um, just to add, um, we've we've left our list uh, in a ranked order, um, which reflects the the scores that they received from their collective evaluation. So um, that allows, you know, depending on the final number of workshops that there is for the IGF as a whole in, in this virtual setting. 
and and the way that it's uh, we end up deciding to balance it between the trucks, then you have a kind of numerical order for which to take forward from our track anyway. We, we actually have a proposal about numbers that, that uh, the Secretariat and I prepared, but we'll come back to that. Let's hear all the groups. And then before you do your, your next round of breakouts, we, we can come to a decision on how to approach numbers. Um, Yuta, next um, question, over to you. Thank, yes, thank you for giving me the floor. I wanted to give an answer, not a question, but uh, reflect on what you said about sub-themes and asked about sub-themes. And I just wanted to, to uh, um, uh, add that you can see from these sub-themes we have in the group of trust, it mirrors more or less that last year this track was called safety, stability, security and resilience. So I do think it's a very broad variety of different issues that have to be dealt with under, under the track of trust and that is mirrored by these diverse uh, sub-themes that we have in, in the among these uh, mm -hmm. workshop proposals. And it's also mirrored somehow by that high number of 98 uh, workshops that have been sent in to the track of trust. So, uh, and we ended up with these sub themes more or less. We started in February with them and it was very much mirrored by the workshop proposals that were sent in for that track. Just as an explanation, yes. thank you. Yes. My, my reaction to the sub themes is that I suppose I mean, maybe it will make sense. I'd like to see them in a narrative. You know, just for example, you have under infrastructure, you have attributing attacks. Um, but many people would see that as a cybersecurity topic. So I think you don't have to do that now, but I think it, it you know, for the, for the participant in the IGF, um, understanding how you see these sub themes will become important. Um, if I can respond to that, Henriette, we did that work when we um, developed the narrative for the trust team at the beginning of the year. Uh, although that information was not all published um, on the website, the trust uh, team uh, did um, policy questions for each one of those sub themes. Um, and the, the narrative that was put together was kind of based on all of the different bits and pieces. So it would be quite, um, not, not easy, let's say, but it would be very natural to come up with a solution what, for what you are proposing, because that, that's in the spirit of how the narrative was stri uh, structured in, Feb in January. Yes, and, and we have much more time to look at this as well. Um, um, so, um, but thanks very much. And I see Susan, okay, you'll be the last person to speak on this and then we'll move on. In the meantime, next there'll be inclusion. So inclusion, you can get ready to report. Susan, you have the floor. Apologies, I have to double on the, on the phone. Um, thank you, Annette. Uh, just very briefly, one idea for a narrative um, that Paul and I used last year in the inclusion track, and which I thought was quite useful and informative, was um, to kind of track the OSI model. So um, in inclusion, we started out with um, you know, both layer one, and we're, we're talking about the importance of infrastructure and developing to infrastructure and then that kind of translated up through the stack and so we we're able to associate different topics with the different layers um, which I thought was kind of a kind of a neat way to for those attendees at the IGF who are who are per se familiar with um, with the more infrastructural aspects of the internet and the layers um, I thought that that was interesting and they Certain folks found it interesting as well to learn about it and to think about um, internet uh, topics in that way. Thanks for that, Susan. And um, uh, please, everyone, Anya, just type this in the chat. If you are not speaking, please mute your mic. Um, thanks very much to the trust group for your report. If there are no more questions, and I don't see any, 
can we please move on to inclusion to give us um, their report? Yes, uh, hi, uh, Paul Rowney here. I'll report on inclusion. Uh, I don't know if we can pull up our report, but our, our understanding on the numbers was slightly different. Uh, for inclusion, we had 70 uh, proposals, uh, and we thought we had 18 of the slots, uh, and that, that, that's what we've worked our proposal based on. Obviously, we would like to have more. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if the ratios are different and we can get more, obviously we would like to have more uh, for the inclusion group. On, on the narrative, uh, we did make a minor tweak and this really was just to uh, bring in the issue of COVID-19 uh, that wasn't uh, part of the initial narrative and it's like a footnote or, or a final sentence. Uh, quite a lot of uh, the workshops Whilst not directly talking about COVID, uh, they, they raise issues that are aligned with COVID, that are aligned with inclusion, et cetera. So for us, we felt it uh, quite important to, to just bring that into the uh, narrative. When, when we look at uh, the sub-themes, uh, we, we built from the uh, initial sub-themes that we had identified when we went for the corporate workshops, and we amended those uh, slightly uh, based on the workshop topics that uh, the workshop proposers uh, identified their workshops against. And that's led us to uh, six uh, sub-themes, uh, which you can see there, which is the local content, language diversity, availability, affordability, access of infrastructure, design and policy for social inclusion and environmental sustainability, digital literacy and capacity building, digital economy, economy and emerging technologies, and governance and policy. Uh, the main things that have really emerged is the environmental sustainability, which came out of our face-to-face, -face, really, and the emerging technologies. Uh, so th those are sort of new tweaks away from uh, the sub-themes of last year. Uh, we have listed the uh, topics that the workshops identified themselves against, and we've tried to align those with uh, the different uh, uh, sub-themes. Uh, that brought us basically if we can go to the next page, uh, a listing of the, the number of those 70 workshops that were aligned to each uh, sub-theme. And this, this we found quite interesting. So Louise, can you go to the next page? If, if, if we look at uh, some of the traditional uh, topics, we, we've sort of moved away from some of the traditional topics and the, the main focus of, of the workshop proposals that were submitted uh, more around uh, the policy design and policy for social inclusion, environmental sustainability, uh, the digital economy and emerging technologies. Uh, that, that accounted for 50% uh, of the uh, workshops that were submitted. So we're, we're, we're moving away from uh, you know, the, the traditional access and affordability uh, issues. Uh, when we looked at uh, the workshops that we categorized into the green basket, uh, you'll see we, we, we actually put a threshold of the green at uh, the top 14 workshops, there's others in the green, but based on the 18, uh, we decided that uh, at least 80% of those should be represented based on uh, the top scorers. Out of the top scorers, the top 14, uh, two of those were aligned to local content and language diversity, none on availability, affordability and access, four for design, policy, and social inclusion, three for digital literacy, and uh, three for digital economy, and two for governance and policy. So this, this led us to the balancing, and uh, out, out of the balancing, uh, we, we then lifted up uh, some workshops, but they, they, based on the interest of uh, the stakeholders, we, we didn't give the same number of workshops per sub theme. Uh, we, we basically balanced it based on uh, the number or the interest uh, across all of the workshops. So that, that, that led us basically to assigning uh, two of the 18 workshops to local content, three to availability affordability, uh, four to design and policy, three to digital literacy capacity building, four to digital economy, and two to governance. 
So the, this really was to balance the workshop based on the uh, presenter's uh, interest. So when we balanced it up, you'll see that uh, if we scroll down to the next page, you, you, you'll see that uh, we brought in four workshops from the yellow basket. Uh, and that's given us our top 18. Uh, we, when it comes to mergers, uh, we, we, we did evaluate the workshops. Uh, we didn't identify any mergers that uh, would uh, improve the quality or the uh, diversity of, of those workshops. Uh, when we move into workshop diversity, it, it mirrors a little bit uh, the overall uh, uh, diversity. You'll see the civil society uh, accounts for 50%. We, we did see if, it, if, if there was a possibility to balance that, in particular trying to raise uh, government and uh, private sector. Uh, but when, when we looked at that, changing workshops didn't really change the balance <laughs> much away from where, where it was there. And it is in line with the, the overall uh, uh, diversity on stakeholder. A regional, I, th I think we got uh, good balance on, on uh, the regional. It's a little low on the uh, LAC. Uh, we would have liked to have improved uh, LAC participation a little bit. Uh, and on gender, it was 50-50. Uh, so on, on the last, we have a, sorry, my kids are in the back. We, we have broken it down in, in, into a flow uh, of how we see the, the, the program flows. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to end here and open the floor to other uh, working group members uh, to add anything that I might have missed. Thanks for that, Paul. <laughs> um, uh, Arsene is writing in the chat that the kids seem really happy. <laughs> I, I admire your, your, your perseverance. Um, just um, anyone else want to add? I have some questions, but let's give the opportunity first to uh, others in this group to contribute. Yes, Madam Chair, may I jump in? Yes, Roberto, go ahead. Just introduce yourself. Thank you very much. I am Roberto Zambrana. I am from Bolivia, actually in my own capacity, and I'm a MAC member. And uh, part also of this group with Paul and Mary and some other colleagues. And uh, well, uh, Paul mentioned it, uh, everything pretty much clear. It, it, uh, actually, I wanted to clarify the numbers that we had, just as a general information. Uh, we indeed had 26 uh, uh, slots assigned uh, for trust, we had 18 uh, slots assigned for uh, inclusion. 12 for data and uh, five for environment. And uh, in our case, we try to, to get inside that number. Actually, I think we have 18, we, we need to revise that. But uh, we consider that uh, many more of those proposals are, are really good and should be considered. But uh, that something that we we were waiting, as as we all know, is the 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 top number that we could use in order to allocate the different slots. I, I think that's something that we we're going to discuss later because that will give us the the final numbers. Maybe keeping the proportions, if every every group uh, um, agrees in that we could uh, keep that uh, that uh, original numbers. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks, thanks, Roberto. Um, Yuta, I see your hand. Uh, do you want to ask a question or is that an old hand? Sorry, that's an old hand. An old I used hand. to cue. <laughs> thanks, thanks, um, thanks, Yuta. So my question, if I understand correctly, is that your sub theme? So I have two questions at this point. The sub theme for um, sub, sub theme three design and policy for social inclusion and environmental sustainability. I just want to understand how that relates to our environment track. And then my other question was how did you deal with, for example, gender or race? Or, or issues of inclusion about, you know, that, that 
relate to specific groups of people and users? Which sub-theme or do you have workshops that deal with gender issues? And which sub-theme would you have clustered those under? Uh, first of all, sorry, Madam Chair, I think uh, I, I didn't express very well myself. What I was talking, the numbers I mentioned are the numbers that we included in the general guidance. And I just wanted to clarify which were the numbers allocated for each thematic track. That was the, the numbers I was saying before. Those were not the numbers in our group in order to select the sub-themes. That's fine. We, I'm not talking about numbers. We'll come okay. back and talk about numbers later on. I'm just curious about your sub-themes and uh, how you uh, see the sub-theme three, if I understand correctly. Um, sub-theme sub, sub three of inclusion which has environmental sustainability in it. How does that relate to our track for environment? And then I'm just curious about how you dealt with gender. Yeah, just, I, I, I can respond to that. Uh, if, if we, Luis can just scroll up a little bit and look at the topics. We've actually highlighted the topic the same color as the sub theme and uh, we felt that uh, gender falls under the design and policy for social inclusion. Uh, with regards to environmental sustainability, uh, th this, this was one of our uh, sub-themes that we actually put in uh, at the beginning, but we, we could probably remove it because there, there wasn't any workshops submitted under inclusion, actually, that, that uh, addressed uh, well, there is one. There's one on environmental impact. Um, so, yeah, but it, it, was, it was an inclusion uh, workshop uh, that was looking into the environment, but it was not, it, it wouldn't fit into the environmental track. And that's why we sort of bundled it with, with the design and policy for social inclusion, uh, because it didn't really fit any, anywhere else. And is that a workshop in your is that workshop in your green basket? Which workshop? The one related to environment. I think it's not. Yes. It's not in the in the green basket. Okay, it's not in the green basket. I'm just asking because we have, as you'll see when we when we when we have the report from environment, they had relatively few workshops. So I think if there's, you know, if there's any um, uh, workshop that that might be long. I know you've discussed uh, this already, but we can still, if, if necessary, um, consider shifting a workshop to another track. Um, uh, any questions? Another, sorry, sorry, Madam Chair, you had a second question about the, I think we didn't respond to that. No, I think uh, uh, Paul did, he did respond. Okay. His okay. response was that gender, um, you clustered under design well, um, and for social inclusion. Exactly. So, um, Correct. I think Thanks. that's good. Just remember again that from a user's perspective, a, a, a conference attendee, you'd want to make that explicit. You don't want people to look at the IGF program and, and feel that gender is not, uh, you know, considered a serious topic. So that's just, but that the narrative track can play that role. Any questions for this group? Okay, I see no questions for clarification. Thanks very much, Roberto and Paul and everyone else. Next, we have environment. Environment, are you ready? Yes, I am. Yes, we are. Please go ahead. Just introduce yourself for the record again. Yes, so while, while Louis is pulling up our, um, our document, this is Timur Schutte, um, business community member in my third year. Um, and I am one of the coordinators for the environment track together with my colleagues June and Karim, who I want to thank for, for all their help. Uh, and I also want to thank the, the group um, for their contributions. While Luis is pulling up the document, I just wanted to give a really quick overview on our methodology. There it is. Um, so we um, follow roughly the same, the same method that the uh, other groups who presented so far um, followed. 
And I also want to thank all the other coordinators from the different tracks um, for the coordination and the, and the discussion that we had um, and for Roberto and the team uh, on producing the guidelines. I think that was really, really helpful for all of us to, to sort of go down the same path and, and have a more cohesive uh, approach to, to the work that we've been doing. Um, so what we've done here uh, in the environment track, we had a total of 19 proposals. So um, when we compare it with 90 from other tracks, um, there is a difference. Um, but that also allowed us to really go deep and discuss all each proposal very, very carefully. Um, we, uh, firstly, the three coordinators, um, we looked through the proposals and the, and the MAGS rankings and produced um, some very rough um, guidelines for the group. Um, we, uh, we proposed that um, we put in the green basket proposals with a score of four and above, um, that result in about 20% of the workshops proposed. And we also um, noted that we should, we should put into the red basket the proposals that scored below um, 3.5, um, and that was about 25% of the workshops. Um, that um, that we put into that red basket. Um, us, the, uh, and if we go down uh, one more page, Louise, please. Um, we also proposed to look in the in the yellow basket um, to try and fill up certain um, um, gaps that might have been um, identified in the in the green basket. And the main areas that we've seen there was um, gender diversity and regional diversity. Um, so as, as a second stage, the group um, really accepted these proposals from, from the coordinators. And then we had um, a very nice um, hour um, in which we really um, managed to go through the proposals in, um, in the yellow basket with the people um, who, who managed to dial in. So thanks, um, thanks Liana and, and Titi and Lucien and everybody else in the group for your contributions um, into that discussion. Um, and what resulted there is really, um, just to give the highlights, um, an, an agreement that we should follow um, the general ranking of the workshops um, as, the, as the MAG uh, MAG graded it. So we didn't want to change the, um, the order. But what we did um, is we marked some of the um, sessions in that yellow basket, and those are 10 sessions altogether, um, that did a bit um, less well uh, than the others, or if they have any major significant gaps in diversity, or if they lacked in any other way. And those are the ones um, that we marked uh, not yellow and not red, but orange. So if you, um, if you scroll down to the couple of next pages, Luis, um, um, colleagues will be able to see that we have a couple of orange marked um, workshop as well. Um, and um, that's basically uh, our uh, our recommendation uh, would be to keep the f the green ones as they are um, in the top four um, uh, the top four scored um, workshops, and then the next ten would be our yellow basket. And depending on how much space we have, we recommend having those those ten included. There is also a suggestion for merger, and there is also, as I said, the suggestion with uh, marked orange um, that we can revisit if we need to reduce space. We also agree in the group that those that we put in the red basket can be um, advised uh, to uh, try again next year um, um, with, a, with a more fleshed out proposal. Um, so here in, in the slide that Luis is um, sharing now um, is our um, thinking around the sub themes and how the session would flow. Um, they were um, around 10 or 11 sub themes marked by the community uh, for, um, for the workshops that they proposed. We narrowed those down into four categories. Um, first would be um, digital infrastructure and smart cities um, th that would focus more on the angles of um, connectivity, sustainable connectivity, um, energy, um, sustainable data centers, um, issues like that. Um, the second group um, is called Digital Technology Applications for Sustainability, and this is more on 
the application of smart technology um, to make um, to make anything more more green, um, more environmental friendly, and more sustainable. Um, and this is the applications of emerging tech, uh, data governance considerations, um, or just innov innovative technology um, to um, to smart and green approaches. Um, the third workshop um, um, goes slightly more into the negatives uh, or the externalities um, of um, digital technologies. I have to say that all workshops that were proposed, um, or most of the workshops, really looked at the issue from both pro and cons. So they were pretty balanced in that, but there are a few that focus more on the positives of tech and some of that focus more on the negatives of tech. And this third basket is, um, is approaching that, that angle. Um, um, also looking at uh, methods of, um, of counterbalancing some of those negative approaches um, and um, promoting responsible consumption and a circular um, economy for, for ICT and ICT applications. Um, and then the fourth basket um, is, uh, is a very interesting basket as well um, that goes into not necessarily the, the um, applications of technology, but, um, but content online as it relates to, um, to climate change and environmental issues. Um, and that, um, that is climate change misinformation uh, or sharing knowledge or um, building partnerships online to, to learn from one another about um, environmental change. So those are our four, four themes. And you can see there, we slotted not only the, the workshops that are in, in our green or yellow baskets, but we put all of them um, just for colleagues to see um, what we eliminate, how, um, and, and also that is color coded. So as we would eliminate workshops, how that track would look like and how the sub themes would look like. Um, in terms of diversity, um, we proposed a couple of scenarios. So those are the last four slides here. Uh, basically looking at, if we only look at the green um, group, so the first four workshops, this is how diversity looks like. You can see there that um, gender um, is, is pretty unbalanced. It's only one third um, female versus two thirds male. Um, civil society, um, um, proposals or speakers were a bit overrepresented, uh, and um, so that um, the we all group uh, was a bit um, more represented than the others. But as we go down, um, for example, if you look only at the um, green and the and the bright yellow proposals in the next slide, um, you see that that already pretty much balances out in terms of gender and um, and the regional um, diversity while WIOG is still um, very much leading, um, starts to, to break up as well. Um, and the stakeholder group is, is getting more balanced. And then if you look at the next one, um, with that one merger that we suggested, I think this is already a very, um, very well balanced in, in terms of the diversity um, um, considerations and also on all of the, all of the um, sub themes that um, uh, that the community has suggested are already included. Um, and then the last slide would be basically um, our ideal scenario, if possible, um, that, would, um, that would include all of the workshops that, that the group deemed um, uh, that, that did well, um, that counterbalances on the other, uh, to the other side a little bit, the, um, the, the gender diversity. Um, but we're hoping that that's not a bad thing, uh, especially considering um, the whole of the speakers. And, um, and it also balances out very well the regional and um, the stakeholder um, diversity. One thing that we want to mention in general about um, the workshops in environment track, um, considering all 19 proposals, there was only one speaker that was listed as a government speaker. So we would definitely want to make a recommendation to um, any one workshop proposal in this track to try and consider um, promoting their workshop um, to the government sector so that they can have that, um, um, have those uh, participants also well represented. So that is a not so quick overview of what we did. Um, I'm here to respond to any of your questions if you have them. 
Thanks very much, Tamea. And does anyone have anything to add or any questions for, for Tamea? Sylvia, you, you have the floor. Thank you, Andriette. Um, uh, now that uh, Timea mentioned the issue with the speaker uh, on the government, um, uh, the low participation of government, let's say, um, one of the things that we detected during the analysis for the trust uh, proposals is that a lot of um, speakers didn't really select it properly their stakeholder group and the regional groupings as well. Um, so I think that to be able to have proper statistics about the final program, we really need to get on the case of those organizers um, and speakers to actually have accurate information. Um, on the list of the 49 proposals that I assessed, I think around half of those um, had uh, speakers from technical community um, listed as civil society, because a lot of uh, people from universities, universities are um, registered as non-for-profit organizations in their countries. So they listed that as a, a civil society organization when actually academia is part of technical uh, community. And there were um, a, quite a few cases in which New Zealand um, Australia and some other Asian countries that are part of the WIOC uh, region were also listed as um, APAC instead of WIOC. Um, one uh, other um, irregularity that I found with those profiles was quite strange that I, I got a couple of uh, US government representatives that are listed as US Department of State and they were they picked an intergovernmental organization. So I, I think there are some, and that was kind of consistent across. So I, I, my gut tells me that the civil society pie that we are seeing is actually not that big. So maybe there is something there that the secretariat could do to help us run some sort of campaign uh, to get people to update properly their, their community profiles and or some other way of getting that information. So if they mark the country where they are, then the country is added to the regional group or something like that. So it is actually more accurate. I don't, I don't think we have... Um, um, I added all of those comments into my comments to the proposals that I checked. So those organizers will receive those comments, um, but it, it would be really good um, to, to, um, to, to see why that happened. Um, and I, yeah. I will, um, uh, I, I can tell you exactly which proposals are they, but I, I'm, I'm worried that that, that is uh, something that might be common in other tracks and uh, just people may not have the time to actually click on the name of each one of the speakers to double check. This is good. It means that we, um, we would want to verify at some point and certainly for, for next year to try and find a way of, of getting better data. Um, Thanks very much to Maya and everyone. I, you know, what strikes me here is that, you know, we took a very un-UN type uh, definition of environment. And I wonder that if we use the classical definition of sustainability and sustainable development, which includes, uh, you know, environmental impact and human, develop, uh, human development. In other words, if we used a more holistic um, uh, way of defining this theme, I wonder if we would have had, um, um, bigger numbers. It's really, it's really interesting. And, and for those of you who heard the head of UNEP, the United Nations Environmental um, Program, um, speaking at the roadmap launch, she was really adamant and she challenged Fabrizio um, to say that in fact environment should not be an add-on. Um, to the roadmap, that environmental sustainability is, is at the core of, of human existence and survival. So I think, and when I look at the sub-themes, which I think are really great, I've looked at, at you know, they, they make a lot of sense. I think in your narrative, what would be important would be to show the human dimension of those sub-themes, to show how, how um, um, uh, for example, um, uh, which one is so carbon, the circular economy, actually, how that impacts on people um, how smart cities um, have uh, ways of including and excluding people. So I think in your narrative, um, 
take a broad approach uh, when you describe these sub things, but they, they make good sense to me and I think you've done a great job. Liana, you wanted to ask something. Please go ahead. Thank you, Anne Red, for giving the floor to me, Liana Galston speaking. Uh, since we're talking about some concerns, I wanted to raise another one that I found in, uh, in our Baskin in the workshop that we had. One of the workshop proposers said, uh, that we have also invited a member of Open Culture Foundation in Taiwan to speak in the session. However, the IGF does not allow participation from citizens of Taiwan. So I wanted to make sure that this issue is raised up and uh, to the Secretariat uh, and we would reach out to this proposal to say that the, the IGF is inclusive, that has the inclusive nature, so everyone is welcome there. It's not like anyone is not allowing any other speaker from any particular country or whatever is there. So maybe it's a misunderstanding, but I wanted to make sure that um, we reach out this proposer and say that uh, it's not the case with the IGF. We welcome everyone. Uh, I will send a number to Secretariat uh, so that they would have this contact. Thank um, thanks, thanks, Liana. And I wonder if perhaps with a remote IGF, there might be um, more, more opportunity here, but I won't raise that now. I think Secretary, just let's note this. Um, um, it is an important um, uh, point to consider. Um, okay, I think, I mean, I, I think you've really done very uh, well prepared work. So mergers at this point, I just want to keep track. Um, how many um, proposals for mergers do we have at the moment? We had none from 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 um, trust. Am I right? Actually, we we had one from trust. One um, from it, trust. It's it, uh, it's not a required merger because one of them was wasn't in green green. basket. Yeah, that's right. The and merger, the yeah. inclusion. Did you have a merger proposal? No, we don't, uh, Madam Chair. We didn't. And I, go ahead, Roberto. Yeah, I just had uh, of, of the recent uh, uh, presentation, I just want to have a quick uh, recommendation or suggestion, if, if I may. Yes, go ahead. It's, it's related to the numbers they apply it. When they use it, the, the percentage that was calculated based on the overall number of proposals, they indeed uh, get uh, uh, the number four, uh, but when we develop the, the guidelines, you will see that in the annex, we actually uh, increase that number in order to provide uh, a little bit of more balance. So that's why in, our, in, in the general guidance, the number is five for the, for the uh, slots that, that the environment uh, group could uh, allocate. So mm -hmm. my suggestion is mm -hmm. if they consider it, uh, possible perhaps to increase one of those proposals to the green basket. Good, we'll come back and we'll come back to the discussion of numbers. So thanks very much to, to inclusion data. We're running a little bit late, not, not badly. So data, you have the floor now. Okay, thank you very much. I'm trying to... I can hear you, Maria. I'm going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking for the presentation because I, I, I asked Luis to control my presentation. It will make it easier for me. So can you see it now? Yes, we yeah, can perfect. see you and we can see your presentation. Perfect. So in the case of uh, the data track, we, we try to follow uh, as much as possible the procedure that was well delineated by the process working group. Uh, always having in mind, as uh, Sylvia mentioned it before in the chat, that the, the, the main uh, goal of, uh, of the selection of workshop or the proposition that we'll be presenting is to taking care of uh, the highest quality of the workshop proposal, as the other group also did, and, and try to reflect as much as possible the diversity from the community that will be uh, proposing or participating as speakers in the proposal, uh, but also the diversity diversity of the topics that were identified at the beginning of the year as the relevant ones for being part of this track, uh, according to the, the information that we gather in the calls for, for uh, um, 
uh, information that we put uh, outside uh, for understanding what the community wants to see as part of the program this year. So taking into consideration the guidelines uh, that the uh, working uh, group uh, in process did, uh, we consider as an initial number of assessment, uh, the number of 12, 12 uh, workshops for the data track. Uh, bearing in mind that this number could be modified later uh, according uh, the, the total number of uh, workshops that we have decided for this year. So we uh, uh, started with an initial, uh, initial uh, signalizing of the belonging of uh, in, the bring, uh, in the green basket of the 12th highest scored uh, workshop in, in our track. So from there, we take it to review what kind of gaps uh, were existing in terms of uh, topics, uh, the different sub-teams uh, initially identified, uh, and also uh, looking into how those uh, uh, green basket proposal, initial green basket proposal, uh, maybe had elements that were duplicated uh, or could be considered uh, that will uh, be a good fit for mergers, or uh, there was some elements missing in terms of uh, uh, the the topic, the subtopics that we were identify or sub teams that we were identify as relevant for the track. So according to that analysis that we did, uh, we start to make some of correction in this allocation of the initial twelve uh, highest scored proposal, and we different from the other groups, uh, we, we approach with a little bit more flexibility uh, to the rule of, of not uh, proposing merger for the ten percent highest score. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, the, the different elements that I just mentioned, uh, the different how the different rules provided for the procedure play uh, make uh, for for us relevant to give preference to the idea of having high quality session and also represented uh, representative. Uh, uh, of the whole topics that were part of the track and the different regions and interests uh, from different communities. So because of that, we propose some mergers. None of these proposals are, are mandatory, of course, are suggestion, initial suggestion. And uh, we, for example, propose to merge the first, uh, uh, the highest scored uh, workshop proposal uh, in our green basket with the highest scored uh, a proposal in the yellow basket because the two uh, represent a topic that it was uh, the same, uh, very close. And uh, in that particular case, what's pointed out by the member of the group that uh, one of these proposal uh, features uh, uh, speakers and representative of two regions of the world and the other one, the, the other two regions. So the idea of combining them, it will precisely uh, allow us to achieve a diversity in the discussion that it was not present in, in each one of those sessions, although the two sessions were very high scored. One was the highest score of the whole track and the other one was pretty good. It was the first one in the yellow basket. Uh, then we move uh, to uh, the, the proposal that we have in the number four of the track uh, in the green basket that we thought collectively that it was a very good proposal for moving to a main session because the relevance of the, of the topic, uh, particularly in the, in the current circumstances of the impact of, of the pandemic in, in, in the use of, uh, of digital technologies. So we thought that it would be a good candidate for moving to uh, a main session and this is the one that is in, in orange in your in the screen. We continue keeping all the others that were uh, in the first uh, in the top of the of the twelve uh, session for the track. And in the case of the of the number seven that you can see here, we also propose uh, a, a merger with the with the session in the number nine, which also belonged to the green basket because again this was precisely the same topic that it was addressing the issue of data privacy in the context of COVID nineteen. Uh, there, there was a good complementarity again uh, between the speakers coming from different groups and representative, uh, the, the proposition of the merger will strengthen the diversity of this conversation that is a very relevant one in the current uh, circumstances. And finally, the last merger that we propose, so we are proposing three 
eventual mergers. Uh, it's the one uh, that linked the session number uh, 10 in the list of the highest score uh, proposal to um, the one that it was in the, um, I'm sorry, uh, it was not merger here. Oh, but yeah, but it's later. It's the with the, I'm sorry, I lost my track with this, but this was a merger with the one that is here in the, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm looking for the information now. Yeah, so the, the, the one that I was presenting, it was the one regarding to the availability of data for monitoring the SDGs that is uh, explained here. I lost track in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the table for finding it, but here it's explained. And um, there was two proposals that were covering the issue of monitoring the SDG, but the difference between the two is that one was a proposing to monitor uh, in, a, in a more broader way, gathering data re regarding uh, the different SDGs, and the the other one was more devoted to particularly uh, the uh, SDGs and the information about information communication technology relevant for the for the fulfillment of the SDG. So at the beginning, there was not agreement in the group. There were some of members of the group that were not sure about merging these two topics. But finally, in a, in a, in a last round of, of consultation, we decided to put forward the recommendation for merger, particularly having into consideration uh, to free some space for, for filling some, some gaps regarding the thematic uh, areas that were not covered by the high score uh, proposal at that point. So with that, uh, there was a, with, with this proposal mergers and the, and the free the space uh, by the main session proposal that we did, there was uh, some uh, space uh, free for the uh, inclusion of some of the proposal in the yellow basket. And there, the main criteria for moving some of the proposal in the yellow basket to the green basket, it was to try to fill the gaps in, in, in the thematic areas that were identified as well relevant and we propose to move the, the proposal from the yellow basket, uh, one uh, regarding the future of work uh, from home, internet and governance post-COVID because we feel again that this was a relevant thematic to cover, particularly in this context. The one uh, regarding data flows, trade and international cooperation, there were uh, uh, a number of, uh, a relevant number of proposals in this topic in the overall uh, set of proposal, but this was the highest score from all of them. So we picked that one for representing that sub team that we still feel that is very relevant to discuss in the track. Then we selected also from the yellow basket uh, one proposal regarding the children's rights and participation in data governance in order to also cover some diversity in the perspective for the issue that it was not well represented in the original. Uh, 12 highest scored proposal and the same for open data for women and persons with disabilities that we thought that also was relevant to consider the issue of uh, vulnerable groups uh, in the track uh, with a workshop proposal that particularly addressed these issues like this one. And also in this case, it was very relevant that this was a proposal that was put uh, forward by um, African representatives and they were the ones that were less well represented in the overall of the initial green basket. So we thought that a way to compensate that deficit was precisely to pick one of the of the yellow basket proposal that addressed that issue with the specific recommendation to them to uh, add to this, to this conversation other geographical representation and, and make it more global and not only uh, regional for, for Africa. So uh, I think that with that, we, I will move for, uh, to the identification of how we covered the subteam proposal with this correction from the uh, moving some of the yellow basket to the, to the green basket. We covered the, the thematic um, uh, lines that we defined it originally uh, for the track in the following way. So we have for go governance dimension of uh, for data driven technologies, two, three, three proposals, sorry. Then digital identity, we have two. Uh, data driven emerging technology, uh, we have three. 
for data driven business model two uh, for data access quality uh, interoperability competition and innovation two and for the final one uh, on the impact of digital sovereignty and internet fragmentation on trust uh, we have one uh, that way we, we felt that we achieve a, a, a pretty uh, balanced and diverse uh, selection of the of the proposal that were all uh, high scored because even the ones that they are making originally in, in the gel in the green basket and belong to the yellow basket they were very close in scoring to, to the to the green ones so uh, in general we are very comfortable that this proposal represent a very balanced uh, approach uh, to the uh, thematic areas and the different uh, geographic and, and sectors and, and and other diversities uh, representation uh, we we are aware of the issue of the merger that we are the the group that we are proposing more mergers than the others and we are aware that we were against the rule of the 10 percent uh, highest score proposal uh, that was uh, proposed by the by the working group uh, on process but we believe that that would need to be pondered against the other uh, issues of uh, quality diversity and so team covering uh, that are also very relevant uh, and a final word, uh, we didn't consider uh, the, the, the lowest 30% proposals in the scoring, which are the ones that belong to the red basket, uh, although there were very good proposals there uh, and the and the cutting scoring between the yellow and the, and the and the red one it was very close that was pointed out for i received some question regarding some specific uh, proposal that that were considered of high, high quality and they didn't make it to the final round uh, for the yellow basket and it's because the the scoring was just too close so we follow in that case the rule of not including them in the yellow basket because they were the, the 30 percent lowest scoring uh, but none of them uh, for fulfill the rule of uh, less than two, po two points of a sc scoring. All of them were about that point. So I will leave it there and I will take any question. And also, uh, I, I forget to uh, mention at the beginning that I, I really appreciate all the work that all the members of the group did reviewing the, the, the propositions that we put forward with Chennai Chair, my co-facilitator in the, in the track, and all the time that they devoted to this very complex analysis of all the rules that we need to uh, apply, but that, that at the end was very useful for, for uh, arriving to this result. So thank you very much to the uh, working uh, group in, in process also for providing uh, those guidelines and, and everyone that provide further recommendation in the way uh, in which we could move forward with this process. I will leave it there. Thank you. Thanks very much, Maria Paz. Can you just go back to your sub themes just so we see those on screen? Any questions or additions to, to the data tracks report? And I see you are all busily chatting in the chat. Please, I find it very hard to follow the chat and listen to the speaker at the same time. So I really urge people to take the floor. Jutta, did you want to add? Uh, I would like to follow up uh, um, something that was addressed in the chat and I'm, I'm a bit uh, wondering how uh, those proposals that were suggested for merger in the data track ended up ranking on the first place in the data track when they failed to address diversity. So I understood the reason to merge them was uh, um, not enough diversity. And I, I was wondering how it could come that they ended up ranking on first and third place if they fail diversity. That's my question to Maria Paz. Sure. Uh, you know that the, the approach that we have for diversity this year, we say that there was a number of criteria for uh, addressing diversity. One of them was geo geographic diversity. So at the end, uh, they address other type of diversity in the in the proposal that uh, uh, result in the in the high scoring of the proposal. But then the geographic balance was not very well achieved, and there were uh, and there were recommendation of improving that, uh, but uh, still. 
overall, the, the quality, the overall quality of the proposal was very good. So I cannot provide like further explanation about that because that was the result of the collective assessment of the group. But, but, but is that what I can say about it? And also because in, in many of these workshops, I don't re recall exactly if this was the case or not. Uh, when there was some issues, one of the alternatives of the scoring was that they, they were like putting uh, for uh, a plan uh, for improving the diversity issue that they have. So in some of these, uh, there was some announcement that they will be uh, revisiting the, the, the issues about diversity and complementing that. So overall, I think that the, especially because of the, of the current circumstances that we are living, there will be, I, I will expect that it will be much more openness uh, from the workshop organizer to review and take some of the suggestions that we as the MAC members could put together regarding how to strengthen the, the diversity in the participation. I don't think that may be different to what happened in, in other kind of a, a, a situation and particularly in person uh, events, uh, it will be so dramatic now to require them to make some uh, revision and try to uh, see how they could uh, fit with with other uh, workshop proposals that were not uh, accepted in and in, in, in how to take those speakers and, and, and improve uh, the, the participation of the accepted workshop. I think that there is a role that we as a MAC could play on that uh, but okay of course this is a a personal view. This don't even represent the data track view. It's my, my personal vision on that. Thank you. And um, Sylvia, you have the floor. I cannot see the speaker's queue right now. So, um, Louise, if you can put that on screen, please. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Henriette. Uh, Sylvia Cadena, Technical Community, um, um, for the record. Um, well, besides the discussion that is going on on the chat about to merge or not to merge from the top 10, which I already expressed uh, my opinion on that. I just wanted to remind um, us all that for this year, we actually agreed to make a change on how the diversity was scored and uh, that not all aspects of diversity were to be uh, addressed by all the, the, the session organizers. So what we said, and Luis can correct me around the language, but it was up to three, right? Right. So we listed a lot of options, uh, di geographic diversity, gender, stakeholder group, uh, uh, difference of perspective, uh, and a bunch of other uh, diversity, di uh, uh, people with disabilities, and etc. cetera. Uh, but they didn't have to fill all of them. If they were um, fulfilling three, then they could get a four or a five on their score if the, 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 they were expressed correctly. So I, I think is is um, I, I think I understand the, the assessment of, of the data uh, group and, and the effort of trying to merge to accommodate to that number of eighteen uh, workshops. But I I think it would be best not to merge proposals on the top ten. Um, and to, and to um, be also mindful that we were the ones that said that that was the definition for diversity for this year and that we are not expecting workshop organizers to address everything under the sun because that is impossible, right? Um, we, we, we did agree on that. And so the, if we are going to modify that definition to be able to say, which part of diversity is more important or which one is mandatory and the other ones are um, additional, then that was not on the call for proposals. And I think it's very, it would be very hard to assess um, proposals based on our very different views about what is more important than others. And uh, we should only refer to what we agreed on the call for proposals. Uh, thank you. Thanks very much, um, Sylvia. Um, Chennai, you asked for the floor as well. Hi, Henriette. Um, sorry, I'm just turning on my camera. Um, hi, everyone. Chennai Chair, uh, MAG representative, civil society, um, calling in from a very cold Johannesburg. So I do understand the... Um, so I just want to second Maria Paz's position because this is where it has also come out from an argument when we're looking at the data track. 
I do understand the um, thought process that went in terms of diversity, and I understand that it's always a, a point of whether sessions get merged or, or we don't. And I have also been contributing to the chat. So um, what I actually wanted to say is, I think fair enough that the process has been decided and then this is what diversity looks like. But I am quite concerned that the data track, and I don't know if this was picked up in the other sessions, that the data track ended up looking very um, Western Europe orientated. So that was, I guess, one of the reasons why we were very much looking at um, merging these sessions and creating space. Because I think now also, because we're, at that time we were thinking about it, that it's going to be in the physical space in Poland. And at the end of the day, we're really trying to make sure that can we have a session that just does not, you know, a track that's not just really representative of one complete region. So, um, I think going forward, and I guess this is also pertaining to the announcement that she will tell us, Henriette, I guess it's something that in, when we go into the breakout sessions, we would know how many sessions are actually going to go through going forward. And secondly, I think it is something that's meant to be taken into account that, yes, we have said diversity if you, you can't address everything underneath the sun, but we cannot, um, I strongly believe we cannot have a data track that is representative of one region alone. And if then that means that perhaps more analysis should be done in terms of like where some of these um, sessions are coming from and where they end up, because the two sessions that we did propose as well that were in the yellow basket, but were not as strong, did respond to gender and I think- Children and- and future of work and children. Yeah. Yeah. And children as well. Because I think for us, it was really important to have a track that's more reflective of different things going on in society and would also be able to address that diversity issue. So um, I look forward to the breakout room and the comments that are going to come from the chair in terms of how many sessions are going to be put forward. But I do think that as we're thinking about these rules and for the future work that this is noted that as a point of analysis that if we're going to have tracks that are representative of one region in our current society, I think maybe then, you know, we do need to continuously work on this understanding of diversity. And I do understand the MAG's job is not to cover everything underneath the sun. So that is my intervention and I look forward to the breakout rooms. Madam Chair, I know that we are over the time, but I just want to uh, respond some, uh, very shortly to some of the comments on the chat. I, I truly believe as a lawyer by training that the, the rules need to be pondered. So there was a rule regarding not recommending uh, mergers of the 10 highest percent scoring. I, I am aware of that. I, I mentioned it in my intervention. All the group was aware of that. We, we Chennai and I, we request everyone to read the rules uh, uh, that was provided by the working group uh, on process. But as a lawyer that I mentioned, I know that the rules need to be pondered to be balance it and achieve the, the intended result. As Chennai uh, uh, has uh, brilliantly pointed out just now, uh, there was a, a particular consideration in this track that um, I, I believe that for some reason happened here and not in the other groups. I don't know why is that we, we fail in some way in the in the scoring process or it was something that it was just related to the type of proposal that were uh, received. By the realities that we come from, a stack of uh, a worship proposal that have this characteristic and the other issue very relevant is that we have very very high scored proposal that repeated uh, the, the, the very same topic so we couldn't have four proposal regarding uh, the, the uh, privacy consideration of the COVID-19. There were at least four in the, in, in the uh, highest scored proposal that had that uh, uh, topic covered. And uh, I think that the understanding of the, of the mergers also, it could be maybe a different one in this case. We could consider that the one that is accepted is the, the highest scored of the two that we are proposing uh, merger and just 
to mention to the other organizers of the other one that we are proposing to merge with, uh, mentioning that the, their proposal were not accepted, but that they could be invited as a speaker in another session covering the same topic uh, that uh, it, it has been accepted. So I don't know if the right word for addressing the issue is mergers, maybe it's not mergers, but more like picking the highest score and leave it that established at the accepted session and invite from the other proposal additional speakers to fulfill uh, the, the, the gaps that are in the accepted proposal. That could be another option that I think that, that could be possible and maybe uh, the MAC will feel more comfort, comfortable with that because it will not be properly a merger but uh, a, a different approach. I will leave it there. Thanks. Sorry, I'm just getting pen and paper here um, to make notes. Um, thanks for that and thanks for the responses. We have Tamea and Jennifer and, and then we'll move on to a, a, a general discussion. So Tamea, you are next. Many thanks, Henriette, and I'll, I'll try to be brief. And thank you to Maria Paz and to Chennai for, for um, all the explanations and the hard work. Uh, I, I think you definitely have your, your best, um, everybody's best interest in mind, and you're trying to find the best solutions for this. So I, I do understand how hard it is, uh, especially when you have so many good proposals to choose from. So uh, I, I really, I, I don't want to be in your, your, your shoes right now, for sure. Um, but what I would like to... Um, perhaps offer as, as, a, as a compromise solution um, for, for the group to consider. And I am part also of the data track and the environment track, so I'll try to split myself into two and, and try and work with you guys as well this afternoon. But um, what Chennai said, I think it's very important that we need to make sure that, that we don't let any one group to overtake the others. And, and I, I completely understand that. Uh, and I also understand what you are saying um, that, um, that um, what, what you are um, what you're trying to do is, is consider the rules um, flexible and trying to make sure that the overarching purpose is observed and the rules don't stay in the in the in the way of that. And I, I can also understand why you're saying that. Um, but I think that there's this doesn't really have to exclude one and the other. I, the fact that we agreed to have a rule um, that we have the top 10%, um, percent, so not even a top 10 workshop, the top 10%, um, that doesn't have to be, that means five workshops for the data track not to be uh, considered for mergers. Um, that leaves, I think, enough space to try and correct any sort of gaps that those sessions um, bring from, um, from the rest of the workshops. And this is what all the other tracks are, are trying to do. And I do understand that while three tracks out of the four are following the same process, perhaps it stands out a little bit too much that, that this track is taking another approach. And I understand that some people are confused about that. So maybe you want to, to try and look back what are the actual gaps that are there and how we can make sure that we, we overcome those gaps um, uh, when, when we are looking at, um, at the track um, and while also we are observing the process. Um, and as you said, they're, they're, the, the rules are there to, to be reconsidered and changed and, and make them work for us and for our purposes. But there's also a time and place to do that. And I'm not sure that, that we should be changing rules in the middle of the process. Um, or, or maybe we can think about it for next year. We didn't say we shouldn't have mergers at all. We just said to find a compromise solution, um, don't have mergers in the very, very top of the, um, of the track. And, and I think that is still a rule that can be observed. And through that, we can still achieve the goals that, that Chennai so eloquently um, uh, stated. Thank you both. Thanks, yeah, Tamea. Oh, Jennifer. Only to respond to... to... Jennifer first. Oh, sorry. Jennifer, are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Thank you, Henriette. I have a problem with starting my camera. I apologize for that. It seems I'm not able to this time for some reason, but I can go ahead. Um, I just wanted to, to put on record what I was also putting in chat since, uh, thank you, Henriette, for the reminder. Um, my, my name is Jennifer Chung. I'm a third year MAG member and I'm part of the private sector. Um, I think there's two main, uh, things that we need to keep in consideration here. 
uh, and I think many colleagues have mentioned it on chat, but maybe not on voice, that we created the set of guidelines and rules in order for us to make sure we take um, you know, any kind of conflicts of interest, any personal bias out of the equation when we do our evaluations. And as MAG members, when we do our evaluations, it's actually very important that we uphold this, this process because if we are undermining our own scoring, that makes the entire, uh, uh, entire mechanism suffers from it. It, it. it is actually not a good look for us. Um, that being said, I think the second thing is, even though in past years, um, as MAG member and also as an observer, I've noted that every time mergers are, are discussed and, and considered, it is an extremely difficult task. Uh, I think one of the past MAG members have mentioned that, you know, we, there was a hope that mergers weren't being seen as being a penalty. And, and this is not what I'm trying to get at here either. But I am saying that when we are looking at very highly scored um, proposals, we do have a set of tools as MAG members that we can use to address any perceived lack on these proposals without jumping straight to the most difficult one to achieve, which would be the mergers. I think that's also another reason why the other tracks uh, are very cautious about suggesting mergers because also given experience, it is quite difficult to achieve that. You know. Uh, to, to merge a proposal that has scored very highly and is very considered uh, with a proposal that is completely different is always um, very difficult. So I think I wanted to highlight these two points. Thank you. Um, thanks, thanks for that. Um, I, we are running out of time and we have to discuss numbers, but, but Maria Paz, you wanted to respond and I think you said there was only one workshop, but, but uh, yeah. please go ahead and respond. Yeah, only to respond the question made by Timia. Uh, we did the analysis about uh, what uh, of the proposal would be affected by the 10% the rule, as you mentioned. Uh, that means that from the, uh, the top five uh, workshop, uh, the, there shouldn't be any merger proposal. So that leads a very easy solution. The easy solution is like just leave it the, 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 the highest uh, workshop in the green basket, the number one, as it is, not proposing uh, the merger with the first one in the yellow basket and just to work with them to improve the, the, the diversity, the geographic diversity. And it's very easy. And it's the only proposal that will be affected by that rule. If all the group is very concerned with following the procedures, that's the very easy fix. Because the other one that it's proposed to do something special in the group of the top five is the one that we are proposing as a main session, not as a merger. And if that proposition is not uh, accepted, also will stay there and, and not, will not be affected in any form. So it's not dramatic change in our evaluation if, if the group believe that that uh, rule should be followed in this case. It's an easy fix. Thank you. Thanks, Maria Paz. Um, my personal view, in fact, I mean, I don't want to go against the process because I know that we agreed on the workshop evaluation working groups suggestion. Personally, I actually, and from my own experience, I think if handled with sensitivity, even high scoring workshops can benefit from from a, um, a voluntary merger, you know, not a, not a, a compelled merger. So, um, but but I do I think I take the point and I think this uh, is a decision that was discussed earlier and there was agreement on how to handle mergers. I also just want to remind everyone that the that um, if I remember correctly the survey that was done last year by the workshop process working group um, the the response from from 2019 session organizers was actually quite positive people weren't negative about being um, asked to merge so i think we should uh, we shouldn't feel so incredibly um reluctant to ask people to merge i just think we need to do it with sensitivity and care and it has to be voluntary we can't compel i think particularly um, you know, if, if it is a high scoring work workshop, even if it's not a very high scoring workshop, but if it's a workshop that did a good proposal, we do need to be careful about that. But I, I Maria Paz, I think that there's a strong, my sense is there's a strong feeling from the MAG that, that they would like all the tracks to, 
to um, to stick to the agreed procedure. But I think you know you you've made a strong argument, and when you go back into your breakout group, I think take on board what you've heard from the mag. Um, but if you still feel strongly that you can make a very good case for making for asking for an exception to that, I think you should do that. I just want to mention something else. We didn't talk a lot about sub themes. I wanted to get everyone's feedback on the sub themes um, before we go into the next breakout session. To me, they all look fine, and I think you've done you've all done great work. I think what what would be good from a program point of view, though, is to is to have more similarity in how you articulate the sub themes. Um, some of you articulate them sort of more. Um, like the data track sub themes, for example, uh, link back to data. Some of you have different, so trust has different themes like cybersecurity and, and so on. I think for the program, it might be useful for us. We don't have to do it during this meeting, but to find more of a common way in, in terms of, of the, 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 the phrasing and the, the way in which we um, describe the sub themes. So I think before, we, I mean, please take the cue uh, 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 if you want to say anything. I just want you to look now because numbers and percentages clearly has been challenging. So to start us on, on this, um, the Secretariat and I have prepared some very, very broad parameters. Um, for me, I think a very important depart, depart, point of departure, which I haven't heard anyone actually say yet, is that we really should not be rejecting good proposals. I think for us as, as you know, I, as somebody who's been part of the IGF community for a long time, I think um, merging is a far better option than, than just being excluded. So I do think um, we shouldn't let numbers um, um, make us or, or percentages or allocations you know, I think we should always be willing to find a way of giving really good proposals space in the IGF. I think that's that's an important point of departure. But I do understand that that decision has to be made and, and we have to have numbers. So what we've done as the Secretariat, we've come up with some very rough numbers. And um, Louise, if you can just move up a little bit to the, to the uh, plenary section of the agenda. So what we've done here is to, to come up with a proposal uh, which you should discuss. So, so what are the assumptions uh, in this proposal? <clears throat> so we started from um, two assumptions with the total number of workshops. Um, we are proposing that, that by the end of today, we come up with, or by the end of your breaking breakout groups, we come up with um, no more than, than, than 80, and no fewer than 70, more or less. <coughs> Excuse me. Why this number? This is because um, we had 65 last year, and I think 65 felt like a reasonable number. This year, we'll have a virtual IGF. Now, what we have um, found out from colleagues, Eurodig in particular, is that we are going to have a second round of vetting because we are going to have to ask all the successful proposers to resubmit with a plan for how they are going to run their workshop virtually. And I think we should assume that, that and I know this is more work for the MAG, um, but I don't think we can assume that we'll automatically accept everyone's proposal. So I think we need to factor in for, for some um, some sessions that, that we feel just do not submit a good enough um, proposal for the online version of their workshop. So um, if 80 is too many, then let's make it 70. But we do need to factor that there'll be some, 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 some drop off in numbers when we do the second round of vetting. Um, but if you feel that that's too many, let's discuss that. And then secondly, in terms of number of sessions uh, per track, we at the Secretariat and myself, we feel that we shouldn't, um, that balance is not that important. It's much more important that we find space for the good quality proposals. 
So we're just proposing, and this is open to you for input, a minimum of 10 per thematic track and a maximum of 25. So any reactions to that? I see, Yuta, you've asked for the floor. Yes, thank you, Anret. Thank you for giving me the floor. Jutta Kroll, MAC member in my third year for civil society from Germany. Um, it's just a question whether I got that right. Do you suggest that all the workshop proposals that uh, the MAC members will agree on to be in the green basket, that means above the threshold, that these go back to the workshop proposers and then they have to confirm that they have a concept to run the session that uh, they had proposed uh, at a virtual IGF. Is that correct? That's exactly what I'm proposing. And, and I've, I've looked into this you know, in quite a lot of depth and discussed it with Sandra um, and the Eurodic team. And um, because I think what we know is that, all, and we know this from this MAG meeting, I mean, uh, Anya and Shengatai and Louise and I have really worked hard to, to prepare this agenda and this process. Online sessions require more preparation than face-to-face -face sessions. And I think for us as the MAG, it's very important to ensure that we've done everything within our power to, to make sure that the, that the workshops are, are well managed and well run. So we might need other levels of technical support, but I think at this point, what I'm referring to is to ask those um, successful proposers to, to submit a, a short outline of how they are going to run this as a virtual um, process. And that could also be an opportunity um, to, to ask them to introduce other improvements that you might have um, noted in your evaluation of the sessions. So yes, the answer is yes to, to you, Jutta. Um, Sylvia, you asked for the floor. Uh, thank you, Andreat. I have a question. Um, well, I, I, I mentioned before that I think all the groups worked based on quality, and I, I think that we kind of hit that nail. Uh, having the number of 80 proposals sounds really uh, you know, good. I was just wondering, based on the documents that were already submitted with the recommendations that each group has, if there is any um, number from the Secretariat in terms of how many uh, we need to drop from different, the different groups. Um, if I in knowing, that. In knowing, I knowing that that is, hold on, sorry, Andrea, knowing that in, on our case, on the trust uh, group, that is the one that has more, more proposals submitted and more proposals uh, for the recommendations. Um, I just want to make sure that when we look at the overall program and we look at the balance and we look at the, all of that, that the scoring also reflects the quality of the proposals that we select. Um, so if, if, we, if, if we have some um, uh, help from the Secretariat to actually see those uh, numbers, that might uh, be very helpful for the discussion in case uh, the trust uh, group has to drop uh, some, for example. Um, so it, it will be really good um, because the trust group has put forward 35 proposals plus one for the merger. Yeah. Uh, and according to that percentage in that maximum of 25, we might need to drop 10. And I, I, I don't agree to that because all of those are over four um, score. So, or almost. So uh, that that's that's that if if it is absolutely impossible to fit them in and etc., then fine. But if we go with the with the idea of putting quality over the numbers, then the quality is there, and I will um, do my best to protect those uh, sessions to be included. Uh, so I would appreciate some guidelines from um, the secretariat in terms of the numbers for each. Uh, track. Thanks. Um, thanks, Sylvia. Just, uh, Carlos, I know you've asked for the floor, but can we just do that quickly? I don't think, Secretary, so are you, are you able to do that? But can I just ask each group? I know that for trust, you had 36, correct? That you wanted to include. Yes, yes, but if you, um, if you with your guideline of 25 means 11. Let's just hang on, hang on, Sylvia. Let's just go through each group. Inclusion, what was your number? 
we, 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 we shortlisted 18 based on the assumption that we would have 18 slots. But we, we, we easily have 25 or more very good workshops. So okay, if you so move you the threshold up, we, we can fill it easily. Okay, and then um, environment, you had 14, or how yes, many 14, did you? Exactly, yes. 14, um, and data? Yeah, we, we uh, selected 13, our number was 12, and we added one more for the purpose of uh, including some of the uh, thematic gaps. So we had 13, but uh, we can come back and fi finally, uh, easily find uh, the ones additional that could be required. Yeah. Um, so, so it does look here as if we are not very far off from that number of, of 80. I think, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing a very scientific count here, um, but if we apply the mergers, that probably brings us down to, um, to, to the desired number. And my sense is that environment and data, you are ha happy with your numbers. Inclusion, you would like to add more if you could. And trust, um, you don't want any change or are there some you feel you can shed? No, we, I do think the 36 were those that we wanted to, to have included due to the scores that they have achieved. And I, I would also like to remind, if we go for quality, then trust made for the five best scoring proposals in the overall rank over all four tracks. So I don't think it's only quantity like the 98 that went into the trust basket, but also the quality. Sorry for jumping in. I was just trying That's to answer your question. Thanks. I count that we've got 81 on the table at the moment. Um, so I think really, uh, uh, which is a lot, um, but we still need to then add the mergers and then we need to, to look at um, um, how to do the second round of vetting. But Carlos, let me give you the floor before we continue. Thank you. Uh, we have to turn on the, the, the camera, right? Okay. Um, I have one comment and one question. The comment is, if we remove the physical constraint component, which is the case because IGF will be virtual, and uh, if we stretch the whole meeting to two weeks, I think we'll have more flexibility, flexibility regarding the number of workshops. Am I right? And uh, this is a comment and, of course, a question as well. And the second is, if we go for a second round of vetting uh, to check whether the, on, the, the online version of the approved workshops is acceptable, what are the criteria we are going to use to, to decide on these proposals? Because I don't think we have criteria for the online format yet, do we? These are, these are my comments and questions, thank you. Um, Carlos, we don't, and um, and I don't think we've really had time to do that, but at the same time, I think we can get that together um, relatively easily, and I think, I mean, as the workshop evaluation group has done so much work already, um, if you would like, then the Secretariat and myself can do the first, uh, first attempt at that um, and then give it to you for, for comment. Um, but no, we don't have that yet. We, we do have to develop that. Um, ben, you have the floor. Thanks. Uh, yes, um, my video started. Um, so thank you for giving us uh, some guidance about aiming for 80. And um, I wonder whether, and, and we are close, as you say, um, to clarify that with trust, the, the merger isn't really uh, an issue here because it's a, uh, something which is not in our 36 we propose could be merged with one that is in our 36. So it, it wouldn't, uh, it doesn't take the number down from 36. Uh, it's a 37th workshop that would be incorporated if, if um, the other workshop agrees to the merger. But my suggestion um, was going to be that one way to work out how many slots we should have is, is to look at the um, 
the proportion of proposals received per track. And so that, that would probably um, suggest that a few would be lost from trust, um, maybe going down to 33, and that a few would be added to inclusion, I think. I, I didn't have enough time to do um, the maths and to, to work out, but that could be one way of um, working out how to adjust the recommendations we have without too many, too many changes at this point. I think yeah. indeed you can do that. I was going to suggest that, that when you go into your breakout, that trust, because you've got the highest number, that you you do look at your list again to see if if there are some that you that you feel you can do without um and inclusion that you go and look at your list and and put some back that you felt you know really do deserve to be to be in i think with the other two tracks we are dealing with small numbers we don't really want to to lose workshops there um, not if you feel that you've got the quality that, that we are looking for. And I also wonder if you would be willing in your breakout groups now, um, because I don't think the number discussions is going to be so, so, you know, so time consuming because you've done all the preparation. But if you have time in your breakout groups to start coming up with some points that you feel uh, we should include in the vetting process for online presentation. You know, that could be um, something. If I look now, um, if we look at the tasks, um, Louise, if you can just scroll down a little bit. Um, for this breakout group, if you look at the column there, we have the, what we felt should be the output of your breakout groups. List of approved workshops, you're very close to achieving that. Sub-themes, you're very close to achieving that, although I would like a bit more discussion on that, but, but we can always come back to that. Proposals for mergers, you've done that. And I haven't heard any dissent around that except for the, the data tracks um, proposal to, to ask high scoring um, workshops to, to merge. And I think Maria Paz, you've, you've heard the sentiment there. So you and your group just need to take that on board. And then here we have other recommendations, workshop for becoming a main session. We've got one proposal so far. Um, and I think what I want to suggest is that we, we discuss that proposal tomorrow when we look at main sessions. And then here I have optional preferences, ideas for a virtual IGF. Um, so I think, I mean, you could also start talking about the criteria for vetting but it might be more useful to talk about general preferences. Um, I'm going to leave that to the facilitators to, to put to your group. And you can decide whether you want to discuss preferences um, um, for virtual IGF in terms of time and shape, or if you want to talk about vetting, about criteria um, that we want to use to evaluate whether we believe this will be a successful online session. And if we get a bit of both, that's good. We, we can work with that. And um, I'm concerned about time. We've run over time, but I think we needed to, um, to, to, to run it over time with this plenary. Um, and I suspect that your breakout sessions probably won't be very long because you've done so much preparatory work. Um, so on this, do you feel are there any more points on this? Are people comfortable with this approach to the breakout sessions? Are there questions for clarity or suggestions about how to approach these sessions? I'm not watching the chat. Um, I'm relying on you all to speak. So please say it out loud. Um. It's Ben Wallace again, uh, and yet just to note something I, I did put in the chat, which you can't see. Um, I took the, so when the Secretariat shared with us statistics about all of the workshops a few weeks ago, uh, slide number two contained the, the breakdown per track. It was 41% for trust, 21% for data, 8% for environment and 30% for inclusion. So. Um, I took the number of 80 workshops and um, did the percentages for each. So that would mean trust would have to come down to 33, inclusion would go to 24, 
there would be 17 data in six environments. So I know that's maybe a crude way of doing something, but that might be a target for us to aim for within our evaluation groups. I would just, with environment, I wouldn't, you know, my suggestion would be not to go down to six. I think this is a new track. Um, we need time to, to work with it. Um, I think if we only have a program, if we have a program with only six workshops in the environment track, that could, I think, reflect negatively on, and, and on, on the kind of start that want, we want to give to this, uh, to this track. So, I mean, I'm happy with the, the larger number that the group have come up with, provided they feel those are good proposals. Um, Guta. Yes, I have a question with regard to the numbers. Do we, do we expect to accommodate 80 uh, workshops into the program? Or do you assume that out of these 80 that we accept now, some will drop out just because they do not feel up to organize a, a virtual session? So uh, the question is whether we, we would need maybe 90 to then come down to 80 with the dropouts who do not feel up to the task? Or do we assume we, we uh, suggest 80 and then uh, we will have a dropout rate of 10 and we end up with 70? That, that needs to clari be I'll clarified. Try, I'll try and clarify that. And Shengatai, please jump in here as well. We, we felt that we don't really want more than 80 because um, 80 is a lot. And, and there is a concern about the IGF um, not being um, too big. Um, Last year we had 65, but that, that was for three tracks. So I thought a fourth track, um, a ceiling of 80 seems reasonable. I don't think we should go higher than that. Um, so I don't think we should decide on that number if we can't accommodate that, because there is still the, the, the possibility that all the, the workshop um, proposals will, will come up with strong plans for running it online. But I think we will probably lose some. Um, but we don't want to lose too many. So, you know, I hope that's, that's clarified. You know, we, I think, so what we're working with here is a target number, uh, a final target of something between 80 and 70. But Shengatai, can you jump in here and add a little bit uh, in terms of how we approach this when we prepared for the meeting? Uh, thank you very much, Henriette. No, no, that's very true. Um, we do suppose that uh, when you do select the 80, there will, there will, of course, be some droppage and it will come down to almost around 70. Um, so that would be a good number to work with. I don't think I have anything else to add as such, but just to underscore what Henriette has said about the environment track, that we do have to as well encourage that track. So um, I would give it a little bit more um, workshop space than it, it would ordinarily have received if we just go strictly by percentages. Thanks, Shengatai. Tamea. Thank you for, for that. I'll try to be brief. Um, I just wanted to um, offer a, a possible solution to this because uh, try as we might, we, we can assume how many people will drop out, but we don't know um, if, if it is possible for each group to think about how many sessions they would have in terms of um, the numbers that we all agree on um, for their track and then identify maybe, I don't know, three, four, five more um, that we, we, we just keep in, in, in the back, um, you know, um, as, as people do with, uh, I don't know, college applications. We put those on the wait list and if somebody decides not to take their place or, or drop out from having that session that they were selected to have for whatever reason, then we lift up in their order um, uh, the backup sessions. Perhaps that would be something that we can do. And we already have the green and yellow baskets to do that, so that might not be that difficult. But I'd rather keep the, the session numbers low first and then bring in if we need to, if somebody drops out, then have a large number of sessions and then hope that somebody drops out so we have a manageable program. Uh, so sorry, I have one more thing to say, if it's okay, Henriette. Henriette? Yes, sorry, I was unmuting. Of course, go oh, ahead. Okay. Yes, yes, um, so uh, Tatema just reminded me as well. So 
I think also we shouldn't just think about having the maximum number of workshops. We should also think about that stream. Do these workshops, you know, make a logical flow? And um, let's say you choose, I mean, just picking a number, if you choose 20 workshops, do they make a logical stream? Or can you do it in 18 and the, those two that you tack on uh, disrupt that flow, then of course you can drop those. But if you need, you know, one or two extra more to make that stream, then fine, yes. So it shouldn't be thinking of absolute numbers as such, but yes, please do try and stick to those guidelines of the numbers. Yeah. Um, thanks, Shangatai. Thanks, Tamea. Tamea, I don't think your proposal is mutually exclusive with what we have come up with. Um, I think that we, we um, you know, the, the total number we can accommodate is also going to be determined by the design of the event. And we just haven't had the time to decide that now. So, you know, and, and I don't want you to, I want this work that you've done on the workshops for you to complete it. You know, we might have to make adjustments at a later stage, but I think this target figure of no more than 80 at this point, um, with the kind of distribution that we've come up with, um, seems, I think, fair um, at this point. I think if you want to keep a reserve list, as Tamea has, has in, suggested, I think absolutely do that. If you feel there are workshops that are worthy of being on that reserve list. So we now need to break out. I'm sure you need a break before you start your breakout groups. Um, the original plan was that, that we were supposed to, to um, start these breakout groups at um, an hour ago. So we've actually gone an hour, hour over time, but I think we needed to do that. We then allocated um, uh, quite a lot of time for the, the breakout groups. And we were going to ask you all to come back to a plenary today, just for us to identify next steps. So what I'm proposing is that we cancel that, that we don't have a, a plenary, that you now break out into all your groups, and then um, the facilitators can decide how long you want to go, go on, how long of a break you want to give one another um, before you start working, or whether you want to jump in immediately. And then we'll come back tomorrow and listen to your reports. Is that clear? Does anyone have any questions about the process? Just jump in and don't, don't worry about taking the floor. Does anyone, yes. all the facilitators, are you clear on what will happen now? Hello. Uh, Hello. Hello. Luis, go ahead. No, just technical question. So if we don't have the, the last session, uh, we will still have the, the breakout, but they return to the main session. So basically we will keep the main session open. We will put a maximum time of 90 minutes and we will keep uh, that time, the session open. And then after 90 minutes, we will close the, the main session, meaning that there will be a maximum of 90 minutes for the meetings now. Is that is that absolutely. okay with the mic? That's absolutely fine. You'll have 90 minutes. Um, and you can decide how much of that you need. I'll stay around and I'll move from room to room in case you, you need to, to check in with me on anything. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's up to you how to, to organize your, your um, breakout groups at this point. Hello. Hello, Hello go ahead, is, Mary. Um, I missed some part of your explanation. And on the other hand, I wanted to know are we going on to the 90 minutes now? Um, yes. We're already having um, Zoom fever. I'm already having Zoom fever. I don't know whether we are going to go to 90 minutes now and come back to the main room. Well, we can. That Would you prefer saying? for us to give you, we can easily do that. We can give everyone a break before we open the rooms. Um, yes. As long as you all do come back. Um, is there a preference for that? for us scheduling the break now, instead of allowing the facilitators to schedule the break. Can I hear the I facilitators? Should be done in the groups. So the facilitators should decide 
with their members, okay. it's easier to agree in a smaller group. Okay, good. Agreed. So Mary, there will be breaks, but, but first go into your room, then your facilitator will, will, will talk with you about, about how to give you a break. And absolutely, mm -hmm. I, I agree with you, there's Zoom fatigue. I think people do need a break, but let's uh, uh, let the facilitators discuss that with their groups. I don't see any just other questions. Fast and last, and last clarification. So the rooms will be open for 90 minutes. You can include your own breaks there. And then you are free at any time to leave the, the rooms, the breakout rooms or the main room. I mean, you can return to the main room, but there will be nothing. And then after 90 minutes, everything will be over. So you can leave uh, anything at any time, okay? If you need any help, uh, I will be in the main room. Uh, and you can also call me from the breakout rooms. So it's not a problem during these 90 minutes. Yeah. So Thanks Paul, Paul Rowney here. Yes, Paul. Yeah. Can I just ask a question? Are, are we able to share our own documents in the breakout groups? Yes. Okay, thank you. You are. You can share screens in your breakout groups. So thanks very much, everyone. I apologize for us um, continuing for longer than scheduled, but I think we needed to have this discussion. It was a complex, uh, a complex session, but, but we did need to have this discussion. Uh, thanks very much for the groups, for all your prepar uh, preparatory work. I think it's gonna make the breakout session much faster. And um, thanks to all our observers, thanks to, to the captioner um, who will now stop working, and, and thanks also to the secretariat. And please, everyone, um, you are going to be assigned by Louise to your workshop evaluation breakout group now. Your facilitator will set a break with you and agree on your work modalities, You've all got rapporteurs. Thanks for all the volunteers who volunteered for this. And we'll get back tomorrow at our meeting, which starts at what time? When is our plenary? Tomorrow. I'm getting my other device out. Secretariat, when do we start tomorrow? One o'clock UTC. One o'clock. So one o'clock UTC. Yes, that is correct. Sorry, I have to unmute. Thanks, Shangatai. Thanks, Shangatai. So thanks very much, everyone. I'm closing this plenary, and I look forward to, to dropping in on the breakout rooms and to meeting you all again tomorrow. Thank you, Henriette. Yes, thank you very much, Henriette. Thank you very much. Thank you, Henriette. Thank you, Henriette. Thank you. See you tomorrow. And thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.
I think uh, deal was to continue tomorrow. So after the breakout session, we are uh, finished with today meeting. Okay. You are mute, Nebish. We have 20 people on, on this call still. Uh, Hi, yeah. everyone. I see there are a few people in the room. Um, Henriette here. Um, we did say earlier that we would not have the plenary um, because we ran so late, but um, I see many of you are here. So are there any questions? How did it go? Are there questions? Are you all ready to present your reports tomorrow? I, I think we're. I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> yes, I, I can. I can imagine, Paul. Me too. <laughs> ready for yes. the work tomorrow. We enter yes. the main, main room by default. We're supposed to have gone. Okay, so you don't have to be here. You are just here because you are so dedicated and you can't bear to leave. But in fact, you are all completely free to leave the meeting now. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank Thanks, you, Maria. everyone. Have a good bye -bye. night. Um, a good day. See you tomorrow. Yes, you too. And goodbye, everybody. Bye bye.